Hello everyone, a wonderful morning, esteemed guests and conference participants. It gives me immense pleasure to extend to you a very warm welcome on behalf of Universal Victory and University of Memorial College to the 2 International Seminar on intellectual property rights and the conundrum of information management towards trading and open society with financial assistance from Raja Ramasundai Library Foundation, Indian Council of Social Science Research, Eastern Region Kolkata, and supported by PRS Hospital, Hospital and Research Center Limited and All India Homeopathic Students and Youth Association. I welcome our honorable inaugurator. Professor Vidhi Sharma, Director General, Raja Ramohan Rai Library Foundation, Ministry of Culture, Government of India. I also welcome our chief guest, Professor Prabhakar Rao, former Vice Chancellor, Mijoram University, and Professor and Head of the Department of Library and Information Science, Mijoram University, 
Professor R. K. Bhar, Department of Dietary and Information Science, University of Delhi. Seminar President, Dr. Shrikat Mandal, Teacher in Charge, Biroshi Memorial College. Seminar Director, Professor Udan Bhattacharya, Department of Library and Information Science, Jadavpur University. General Secretary, Dr. Ranjan Shamanto, Librarian, Nahum Paligan, Mahavidala, Kolkata. And Dr. Shakun Khan, Librarian, Narasun Kodatu College. And our Organizing Secretary, Dr. Obit Rai, Librarian, Illusio Memorial College, Kolkata. Sir, I request you all to please come on the desk and take your seat. Now, I would like to invite Dr. Ranjan Shahunta to deliver the welcome address. In 2023, the just last year. And another two 
two-day international seminar uh, had been organized through online mode in 2020 and 2021, respectively. These seminars have uh, served as pivotal platforms for experts, professionals, and scholars to convene uh, exchange ideas and explore innovative solutions to contemporary challenges across various fields. In addition to our seminar, Universal Reading has hosted an impressive array of webinars, totally three nine in numbers. These webinars have provided a global audience with access to cutting edge research, industry insights, and to our leadership from esteemed professionals, experts, and scholars worldwide. Moreover, our organization has facilitated numerous study circuits with a staggering total number 26 content one at every month. These intimate gatherings have provided participants with invaluable opportunities to deep engagement, collaborative learning, and peer mentorship on a diverse range of subjects and disciplines. Furthermore, universal reading has been instrumental in preparing aspiring educators for success in the West Bengal Safe UGC NET JRF exam throughout our dedication uh, uh, coaching service. Our experimental, our experienced teachers, instructors, mentors have provided uh, comprehensive guidance, the rigorous preparation, and personalized support to students, enabling them to excel in this university examination. In addition to our live events and coaching services, Universal Meeting has been committed to knowledge dissemination throughout the, through the publication of newsletters and books. From November 2023, our Universal Meeting published four newsletters, and it is published on the fifth day in every month, and published three books, and also three books will be published after few moments on this stage each offering valuable insight, analysis, and research findings to a broad audience of scholars, teachers, professionals. All activities will be exhibited through our exhibition stall outside the auditorium, and it also be inaugurated after a few moments. As we look back on these achievements, it is clear that Universal Reading has remained steadfast in its mission to empower individuals and professions foster intellectual curiosity and drive positive change through participating lively education and knowledge dissemination. I extend my heartfelt gratitude to all those who have contributed to our success and reaffirm our commitment to excellence in the years ahead. On behalf of Universal Reading and also International Seminar Committee, I extend my deepest appreciation to each and everyone of you for your unwavering commitment, dedication, and support. Together, we Universal Reading Family have created something truly remarkable, and I have no doubt that the future holds even greater promise and potential. I am overwhelmed with gratitude and admiration for each and every one of Universal Reading Family members for their untiring dedication, unwavering commitment, and boundless enthusiasm, which have been the driving force behind Universal Reading's success. And also gratitude <laughs> to Virojo Memorial College family members also. Once again, I extend my heartfelt welcome to all of you, and I wish you a productive and uh, enriching experience at this international seminar on intellectual property rights. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shamuta sir. Now, I would like to request all the dignitaries to come forward and inaugurate the seminar by lighting up the lamp. I request our volunteers to kindly bring up the lamp. Thank <laughs> you. 
Now, this is the time to inaugurate our exhibition stall of the Universal Weekend containing all activities and programs. I would like to request Dr. Ravindra Kumar Mahapatra, Dr. Shalini Lidhikar, Dr. Moses Mohab Naga, and Dr. C.H. Ibohar Singh, please come with us and inaugurate our exhibition stall. I request our volunteers to assist all our dignitaries in the exhibition hall.
प्रोफेसर उदय भट्टाचार्य सर volunteers please come and felicitate dr ranjan shamunda sir Now is the time for the release of three books and one souvenir copy. I would like to request Professor B. B. Sharma sir to release the book Public Library Management Functions and Sustainability in the Knowledge Society. Volunteers, please come.
I would like to request Professor R.K. Bhatsa to release the book Redefine Library in the Social Media Age. Volunteers, please come. Now, I would like to request Dr. Shrikat Pandal sir to release the souvenir copy of the international seminar on intellectual property rights and the conundrum of information managers towards creating an open society. Volunteers, please come. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, volunteer. Professor B.B. Sharma is the director of Raja Ramohan Rai Library Foundation, Ministry of Culture, Government of India. He did his PhD in the year 1992 from University of Hyderabad, in Anthropology. He is also the director of Anthropological Survey of India. He also has administrative experience as he was the deputy director, AP Study Circle, Government of Andhra Pradesh, and so on. His research areas are anthropology of health and illness, ethnomedicine, educational anthropology, etc. Now I request Professor B.P. Sharma sir to deliver the inaugural address and inaugurate the seminar. Over to you, sir. Very good morning to all the <coughs> learned scholars here, <coughs> respected scholars <coughs> from Ida, Professor Prabhakar Ji, Professor Kudriyan Bhattacharya Ji, Professor Sajpal Mandal Ji, Dr. Abhi Roy, Professor Arke Bhai, and of course, many other scholars whom I met briefly earlier and now a great opportunity to meet for a longer time today, perhaps. <coughs> well, I'm, I'm feeling greatly honored to be here and participate in this very important academic event being organized by <coughs> the Universal Meeting and also <coughs> the Jagalpur University and of course we feel very fortunate to be part of it in terms of funding this particular academic event. It's a it's an opportunity to give in to Raja Ramon Rai Foundation. <coughs> I would express my sense of gratitude to the organizers of this conference for making us part of this conference. 
Well, uh, I feel a little uh, like odd and out in the sense that you are all library professionals. I am not really a library professional. <clears throat> My background is anthropology. And I have spent quite a lot of time in the University of Hyderabad teaching <clears throat> and doing research in the area of anthropology and more particularly in the area of medical anthropology. I was rather rendering services as a consultant to World Health Organization, World Bank and other organizations, doing mostly on social national dimensions of health, healthcare and other issues. I have recently joined the Anthropological Center of India as a director. It's only four months ago. After taking over charge as director, I was also asked to take charge of Raja Ram Mumbai Health Foundation. Well, initially I was a bit hesitant. I was not really understanding why this responsibility is going to be. But then I thought. Well, I cannot refuse because it's an orderly and that was my initial response. But later on, when I started functioning as the director general, started knowing more and more about the role of Raja Ramon Rai Library Foundation, its history, its association with professional bodies, its involvement in organization of many academic events all over the country and all. Now I'm feeling that I'm a very fortunate guy. I'm feeling that I'm really, really fortunate. <clears throat> uh, lucky that I'm getting these opportunities to meet very learned people in, in a different discipline, of course, but then an opportunity given to me to learn, to learn. As I'm attending events like this, and also talking to scholars of library sciences, and also library managers and bureaucrats who are <clears throat> involved in the functioning of the public library in the country, I am really feeling that you know I learned a lot about libraries and the role of libraries in the uh, development of the country as such by the way. I've learned how much the governments are committed to the promotion of public libraries in the country and the kind of effort that has been made by the governments, more particularly the central government. <coughs> Through this nodal agency, Raja Ram Mohan Library Foundation. Well, I will not go into the details of what I have learned here, because my learning of library sciences is definitely very, very little as of now. I am trying to learn each day from every person whom I am meeting <clears throat> uh, in the context of organizing something with me. Other related to I have participated in many meetings, state level planning committee meetings in different states already. I have visited quite a few libraries all over the country. I mean, though it is a short time of uh, four months, I think I have visited more than 10 libraries, very important libraries all over the country. And <clears throat> I have participated in important decision-making meetings related to life. So all these opportunities, uh, you know, for me, uh, gave me more and more inputs as to what is what has been done so far. What is that we still need to do in this country? Well, I will not definitely inform you. What is Raja Ram Mohan Rai Library Foundation here? Because you are all connected 
it takes quite long time. You know it is among responsibilities, everything, so I don't have to tell you. And perhaps you are also aware of what is being done in the last five, six years of mobile and the Karam Mobile and the Foundation is also <coughs> known to you. Well, I have seen uh, libraries, public libraries, I am talking about public libraries, not the libraries that has to be academic institutions like Jalapur University or the University of Hyderabad University. I am talking about public libraries. I have seen libraries which are fantastic, very excellent, like the Goa State Central Library, which I visited about 50 days ago. I visited the library in Telangana, which of course I know what it is. The kind of collections they have, <clears throat> and uh, the, the amount of uh, use to which it is being put to by the uh, people of different phases and different sections of the society. It's great. But since this seminar is being organized in an academic institution. <clears throat> uh, I will not really talk about the role of public libraries as such. They can be, <clears throat> no, of course, very important to know how it is happening and all. <clears throat> because country's development really depends, uh, as the research now shows, on the network of public libraries. <clears throat> well, libraries, as all of you tell, all of you would uh, appreciate and also convinced. Libraries are for providing access to information. Access to information means giving power to the people. Giving power to the people means making people more empowered and truly participate uh, in the in all the responsibilities that the country gives to each citizen of this country. <clears throat> We want, of course, we are very, very strong in terms of democracy. We are very proud of some of the value systems that we have been sustaining in the country, including a democracy. And this democracy, in order to be more and more stronger and stronger, needs very, very generous citizens. And libraries provide this opportunity to one. So that's what we are doing. <clears throat> well, of late, the library management systems are pretty changing. This I don't have to tell you, I'm sure I have to learn many things from other people. And they, things are changing, particularly in library sciences. The role of ICT is increasing. We are also seeing the other developments in terms of, uh, you know, Decreasing or uh, declining reading habits from the children. No enthusiasm shown to come to libraries to spend time and learn. We, I mean, with all these developments, I think the responsibility of the library professionals uh, is increasing. Maybe as to how to make the resources given by in different organizations are more used to, more more use. I think we are now facing certain challenges. Challenges of learning many new things and working with new devices, using more and more artificial intelligence or what what people like internet of things and all in the library management I am not Person really to talk about it as if you have uh, more no knowledge than me on these things. But <clears throat> where things are happening in the library sciences is very, very interesting to important and interesting to understand. But I think if you have to know efficiently work, function, and all, more and more quality research has to be done in this field. And this is where I'm drawing a parallel between anthropology and library sciences. Both of them are very interdisciplinary in nature. Anthropology, by definition, is science of human kind. Library has science in it, library science. Both of us 
claim that we have science in, in our approach <coughs> and that we are committed to positivism kind of thing and accordingly the methodologies are wrong. So that's where we are also facing some kind of challenge as to how we make our methodologies more and more relevant. <coughs> Well, this is where now new methodologies are coming and library science definitely has adopted important methodological strategies that anthropologists have been familiar with for many years, a qualitative methods in the strength of anthropology <clears throat> and these methods have been borrowed by all other disciplines, more particularly management sciences and library sciences, correct me if I am wrong. I think it's somewhere around 1980s that methodology, qualitative methodology has started to get used in now. So that has been introduced to the library science research in 1990 or so. They have become more and more powerful and more and more relevant. And, uh, you know, the simple survey like kind of research, the uh, limitations are very much realized. The need for more innovative strategies. Uh, in the research is revised. I think the way this you know, methodology uh, is being used, or uh, the way it needs to be used, uh, needs to be more seriously thought about it. And the skills that are required to handle data collection qualitative uh, data collection and the skills required for very appropriate analysis of the qualitative data. That needs to be uh, you know, thought about and the students in the class have to be given this kind of training. New softwares are now available for analyzing the qualitative data. The softwares have to be used. I mean, we cannot escape. For long, because that's the need of the hour, that is what is expected by the uh, professionals all around the world. So, that has to be used. I am sure the library science professionals who are associated with universities and who are in outside the university system are paying attention to the Enhancing the research capabilities of the uh, NP. I think that is the essential. I'm very sure that that is happening, and seminars of this kind <coughs> definitely help uh, to know, discuss, to deliberate, discuss on uh, the requirements of the day for teaching, learning, research, research dissemination, everything. I'm happy that this seminar organized in Jalap University uh, and uh, the participation of scholars and seeing their scholars like on a few <clears throat> a great opportunity to deliberate on many of the issues that uh, we are in the uh, I am grateful to the audience once again for the wonderful opportunity given to me to be with you to, to, you know, this morning and share my whatever little I know about uh, my resources. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your valuable speech. Our chief guest, Professor Prabhakar Rao, is the former Vice Chancellor, Mizoram University, and Professor and Head of the Department of Library and Information Science, Mizoram University. He completed his PhD in the year 1992 from Uttar University. His research areas are information literacy, institutional repository, library network, and consortia, social media application in libraries, LIS education, etc. He is a member of Academic Council, Executive Council, Chairman, and member of Board of Studies, etc. He has his life membership with various institutions like Indian Library Association, New Delhi. Society of Advancement in Library and Information Science, Chennai, International Federation of Library and Association and Institutions, Netherlands, etc. 
He has written a number of books and book chapters. I request Professor Prabhakar Ratsa to deliver his speech. Well, <laughs> very good morning to all of you. Uh, Professor V.V. Sarma, uh, Director General Raja Ramana Library Foundation. Uh, Professor Bhak from and colleague of the Department of Life and Science in Delhi. Uh, Professor Udayan Patakaya, uh, who is the, the architect behind this uh, conference. Many dignitaries on the dais, of the dais. Many of them are very closely known to me and uh, dear participants, delegates, students and scholars. Well, uh, this is a topic which is very challenging, very contemporary and uh, uh, it has very, very deeper uh, meaning and importance in the present uh, global context. Well, there are three things. One is uh, idea, everybody wants. Another is the information resources, information managers, and uh, open society. Three things, how to combine, how to balance. Well, all of you know, in general, rich and poor, but as a student of life in information science and the international trends and developments, what we call it information rich and information poor. So there is a gap. The rich people can afford getting, obtaining, acquiring lot of information. What about the poor people? How do we minimize this gap between information rich and information poor? If a lot of resources that are available in the market, only these people can afford it, what will happen to the poor? Therefore, in the international forum, there are debates, there are discussions. How can we have the open society, open access, open source, open data, everywhere open, open means that to make the resources available free of cost. That's why we call it open. Like you say, an uh, open source software, uh, license software. License software, you have to pay for that. There are many open source softwares. So in order to achieve a global society, an open society, or to promote open data, there are international initiatives, what we call it open access initiative, OAI. The international forums, international organizations, in which United States take a lead, advise and compel the other countries to be a member, to be a party to open access initiatives, make your resources, any educational or any other institution, make your resources 10%, 20%, freely available to the public. That is why we call it open access initiatives. If the international forums are advocating for open access initiatives, how can we make these or all these resources freely available to the public where the IPR is coming on the way? How can we protect the rights of the intellectuals? If I am an avatar, you are an author of a book, art, painting, sculpture, series, DVD, audio, video. Everybody has an intellectual contributor. How the rights of those intellectual output can be fully protected? That's why we are talking about IPI. We will talk about the information society, the knowledge society, which is one step further of the information society, where the knowledge resources, information and knowledge resources, how can we make it? Really available to the public with full respect to IPR. You all of us, the witness of pandemic, all of us are witness of pandemic. Students, teachers, scholars, public at large, all are confined to home. We cannot go out. Therefore, 
what to put into seven for students, scholars, teachers, public activities? They need some information, information resources in their mobile, in the internet, free of cost. At the same time, when I say that uh, um, United uh, Government of India, UGC, MGMLAT, Ministry of Education, with a lot of enthusiasm, a big publicity, one lesson, one subsystem. One lesson, again, IPR, again, open access. Last week, 10 days back, we got a letter that this open subscription, open lesson, open subscription, one lesson, one subscription is delayed. The present system should continue because the ministry could not arrive at a consensus. Whenever the economy is success, information is success, open access to information resources, many things that are coming into picture. We are the librarian, you must be facing a lot of challenges. How to go for negotiation with these e vendors who are quite smart? What it should be minimum one lakh, they will project it in 10 lakh, 20 lakh, 30 lakh, and using very sophisticated and technical language like ad hoc access, temporary access, perpetual access, so many jargons they have which the every librarian cannot understand. It's not very careful. Because they are very, very business people. That is why when we talk about this open society, open access, and uh, it was even the government of India could not decide to move ahead with one nation and one subscription. Therefore, uh, it is in the right context that the students, the faculty member, the research scholar, working librarians, we should be very careful how can we provide our resources free of cost or open to the public without compromising IPR, which is coming a legal, legal way of uh, handling the things. Otherwise, tomorrow uh, the librarians will be in trouble because how can you make it uh, uh, uploaded uh, or you are avail making it available in the website, uh, free for all, common for all, without clearance of copyright and IPR. That is why it is this topic assumes great important when you talk about open society, open access, international trends and developments, how can you make information resources, key resources and color available to the public without any charge and compromising or going against the IPR intellectual property right. So this is the conundrum. They are using the word conundrum, that is what are the intricacies? Integrities and uh, what are the problems that we are going to face in the coming days when we talk about information resources, roles of the information managers, and at the same time fully respecting to intellectual property rights. I am sure there are a number of papers, those who have contributed are on this particular topic. I am sure that a great discussion, debate, and uh, really the practical issues are being discussed in these two days of seminar, conference, and uh, Professor Udayan, I would like to congratulate and express my gratitude to be here, and at the same time, selecting a very comfortable and challenging topic, which every student, research scholar, and faculty members should think about it, what is going to our future, and in what way we are going to protect and respect the copyright and IPR in providing all these resources free of cost, or to make it available in the open court. With these words, thank you very much for giving an opportunity to be here this particular morning and thank you for your time. Thank you, sir, for your insightful speech. Now I request our cinema director, Professor Udan Bhattacharya, sir, to share his thought. Good morning, everyone. Professor Nidhi Sharma, Director General, Raja Ram Mandar Library Foundation. Professor Dovakar Ram, Ilam Kadipandi, 
Karibu to my friends and seniors sitting over there, Councilor Mohammed Tosha, Omid Kumar, Councilor Nala is there, Dharma Tosha is there, Nimai Babu is there. So, to receive our invitation, now we are here to join us. I will finish my talk with a uh, few words from the Tego. That is Chippo Yeta Bhai Shundo, Ucho Yeta Shir, Gyan Yeta Bhukto, Yeta Grije Yeta Prachi, Apollo Randhan Dara Dibosha Kalpani, Ushu Dhali Lake Lai Khamdo Chippo Kuri. In his transition is like that, my mind is without fear, and here, day is held high, my knowledge is free, but the world has not been broken into fragments by narrow domestic words. So this is a very heavenly line when I am getting a chance. I am given by all these, these lines of Kegel. So I am thankful to all of you to come over here and participate in this two-day international seminar. So now start. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your inspiring lecture. Our Honorable Seminar President, Dr. Shonika Kumaloi, is the Associate Professor in the Department of Bengali and the teacher in charge in Jyoti Memorial College, Kolkata. He is also the governing body member and the member of Board of Studies of two very renowned colleges of Kolkata. He has teaching experience of 19 years. Dr. Mondor is the writer of numerous book chapters and book. Apart from his academic responsibilities, Dr. Mondor is a very popular anchor at Gurudarshan Kendra, Kolkata and a renowned operator. He is a very popular as a political critic too. I request our seminar president, Dr. Shulkat Mondal, to give his valuable speech. Good morning, everybody. I choose to speak in Bengali. It is not sure because that I am a Bengali or not also because of the fact that know my subject is Bengali. But primarily because of the fact that I feel comfortable in speaking Bengali. So it is not only because Bengali is my mother tongue. Of course, I am proud to be a Bengali, but I feel much comfortable in speaking Bengali. So I choose to speak in Bengali in this inaugural session to volunteer my thoughts. Professor Vini uh, Sharma, Chief Guest Professor Prabhupada Rao, Professor R.P. Hart, Dr. Rangna Sam, Seminar Director, Professor Udayan Prakashajo, Bhogi Roy, Shakun Khan, Devonga Khadajara, Deng Mukhtir Kusikachan. Prokhita Pokhe, Shabha Pokhi Shabhe, Jijubhata, Proyezun, Shai Jubhata Kunti, Amanud Nei, Kintu Ghatana Chakri, Hamata Bale, Jokan Kuna Manush, Kuna Pade Bushi Pade, Thik Jee Pokhe, Kuna Rup Contribution Naa Rekhe, Tare Medha Parishram, Anushik Parishram, Kaya Parishram, Kuna Tati, Tare Kuna Contribution Thakhe Naa, Ata Chok Hamata Bale, Oye Chia Chitya Bushi Pade, Aami Shai Yorth Te Hamata Bale Naa Bale, Padhan Kaya Bale Chia Chitya Bushi Pade, Jikaro Nei, आमार स्वामी इन मूर्ति मौनसी चरण शेयर करते हैं, मौनसी आशीन जाना तादात प्रत्येक तुलना है, आमार समस्त कुछ ही उत्तम तो कम बॉयस, बॉयस हो, ता कारण अमी उधर एक बाबू भाई शेष रोमिंग रोड़ा से जलाई बोले उच्चारित कर लें ता थोड़ी प्रकीति बोली जे एक दिन में उन्हरा आमार कॉलेज आलोचना करें चाहिए नहीं रुको मैं टाइम यूनिवर्सल ब्रीफिंग एक शाम के जो तो हो गए हम ना जो भी एक्टर सेमिनार और नए स्कूल जो कौन इटा उन्हें बोले चाहिए ना तो कौन जी पूरी मान टाकार आलोचना शरीर हो रही चिलो जहाँ कोनो सोर्सी मुझे बावजूद चिलो ना कुछ देखे टाका पावजूद माने आलोचना जब तो ये 
তো আমরা ঠিক করেছিলাম সেই সময় উদয়ন বাবুরি কথা মতো যে আমরা মাঠে নামবো তারপরে দেখা যাবে কি হয় এবং শেষ পর্যন্ত ওনারা ওই চিত্র যেটা হয় সুন্দর শীল এই মন্ত্রে দীক্ষা নিয়েছিলেন হয়তো বা এই ছোট লাইন তাকে অনেক বেশি আকৃষ্ট করে যে কারণে তিনি এখানে লাইনগুলি বললেন অন্তত সে কারণেই হয়তো তিনি এগিয়ে এসে শেষ পর্যন্ত সফলতার সাথে আজকে এই অনুষ্ঠানটি পাই দুদিনের चर्चित সে চর্চার বিষয় ইতিমধ্যে আপনারা জানেন ইন্টেলেকচুয়াল প্রপার্টি রাইটস এন্ড ওপেন অ্যাক্সেস আমাদের সম্পত্তির অধিকার ঠিক কত দূর পর্যন্ত বিস্তৃত যেখানে বাড়িটি আমার যেখানে গাড়িটি আমার যেখানে আমি এই সেমিনার থেকে শেষমেশ বিকেল বেলা আমি যখন বাড়ি ঢুকবো তখন আমি বাড়ি গিয়ে দেখব না যে যদি লিগ্যাল হয়ে থাকে অ্যাটলিস্ট যে আমার পরিবার রাস্তায় দাঁড়িয়ে আছে এবং আমার বাড়ির ভেতরে অন্য লোক ঢুকে তারা দখল করে নিয়েছে আমার বাড়িটি আমাদের সংবিধান এটিকে সুনিশ্চিত করেছে আমার সমস্ত রকম সম্পত্তির অধিকার কিন্তু এটি যখন ব্যক্ত আকারে আমরা ব্যক্ত করি সরি ভাবি তখন নিশ্চিতভাবে সেই সম্পত্তির অধিকার যখন আমার সৃষ্টিকে অসুরক্ষিত করে সে সৃষ্টি গান হতে পারে সে সৃষ্টি নাচ হতে পারে সে সৃষ্টি আমার লেখা হতে পারে এ সমস্ত কিছু সৃষ্টিকে যখন সে সুরক্ষিত করে তখন ওই সৃষ্টিও আমার সম্পত্তি সৃষ্টি উপার্জনের বিষয় সৃষ্টি জীবিকার বিষয় সুতরাং ওই সৃষ্টিও আমার সম্পত্তি যেটিকে সুরক্ষিত করা সুরক্ষিত রাখা তা না হলে আমার মনে হয়েছে অন্তত যে মেধা চর্চাই বন্ধ হয়ে যাবে একটা সময় এই কারণে কথাটি বললাম যে আমার কোন সৃষ্টি যদি একেবারেই অন্যকে চুরি করে নিজের বলে চালিয়ে দিতে পারেন তাহলে যতটুকু নিরুৎসাহ হব আমি এবং এর সাথে যদি আমার উপার্জনের অংশ জড়িত থাকে তাহলে আমি আমার মেধা চর্চা থেকে হয়তো সরে আসবো আর এত সহজে অন্যের মেধা চুরি করে যদি নিজে বলে চালিয়ে দেওয়া যায় তাহলে যে লোকটির মধ্যে মেধা আছে সেও ওই সহজ পন্থা অবলম্বন করে নিজের মেধার কোনো চর্চা করবে না এ কারণেই এটিকে সুরক্ষিত করার চেষ্টা আর এটি তখন চ্যালেঞ্জিং হয়ে ওঠে যেটি আজকে সেমিনারেরও বিষয় যখন তখনই চ্যালেঞ্জিং হয়ে ওঠে যখন সেটা ওপেন অ্যাক্সেস প্ল্যাটফর্ম বর্তমানে আমরা পেয়ে গেছি যেখানে একটা ক্লিকে পৃথিবীর সমস্ত কিছু এই মুহূর্তে আমরা জানতে পারি ঠিক যেমনটি এই অনুষ্ঠানে সামান্য কিছু বলবো বলে আমি যখন ভাবছিলাম তখন ওই গুগলে দিয়েই আমি ক্লিক করেছিলাম এবং এই সেমিনারের বিষয়টি লিখেছিলাম তারপরে এই যে কথাগুলো বলছি একেবারে মুখস্ত বলে এসে বলছি সেগুলো আমি সেখানেই পেয়েছিলাম এগুলো আমার সৃষ্টি নয় এবং সেজন্যে আমরা এই মুহূর্তে বলার বক্তব্য আমার সম্পত্তি নয় এটি আমার জন্য সুরক্ষিত নয় ওটি ওখান থেকে দেখে এসে আমি বলছি सम्पत्ति मेधा के सुरक्षित रखते गैलेंजिंग विषय निश्चित आज एवं कल विषय जरा आलोचना कर पंडित प्राप्त তাদের গবেষণা লব্ধ মননশীল আলোচনায় আমরা যারা এখানে থাকব বিশেষ করে যারা গবেষক আছেন ছাত্রছাত্রী আছেন তারা সবাই আমরা সমৃদ্ধ হব সর্বশেষে আমি কৃতজ্ঞতা জানাই ইউনিভার্সাল ব্রিফিংকে তাদের জন্য আমি আবারও বলছি এখানে দাঁড়ানোর সুযোগ হয়েছে এবং বিশেষভাবে ধন্যবাদ জানাই আমার কলেজের আমাদের কলেজের টি রেজিম মেমোরিয়াল কলেজের লাইব্রেরিয়ান অভিক রয়কে ডক্টর অভিক রয়কে তার নিরলস প্রচেষ্টা আমি নিজের চোখের সামনে দেখেছি এক এক সময় ওপরে আমার রাগ হতো আমাদের কলেজে ন্যায় একত্রিশে মার্চের মধ্যে আমাদের मेमोरियल সবাইকে অসংখ্য ধন্যবাদ ও নমস্কার থ্যাঙ্ক ইউ স্যার ফর ইউর এলোকেন্ট স্পিচ নাও আই রিকোয়েস্ট ডক্টর অভিতা টু গিভ ভোট অফ থ্যাঙ্কস
Dans ça. Allez, c'est ma question. Une seule règle pour everybody. I'm giving the opportunity. I say each and every one of you to my life to say thank you to all of us. Thank you. Uh, the, my thank you will begin on the number three. The person with me and the Rosio Memorial College. As in all the region, Professor Didi Sharma, Director General Raja Ram, who's my life in foundation. Ministry of Culture, Government of India. Thank you, sir, for uh, giving your time and for enlightening us with your honorable address. We'd like to thank our chief guest, Professor Prabhupada Lord, Professor Nikhil, Department of Library, Information Science, Mission of University. Sir, you have been a part of our seminar, and again, here we are. Having him amongst us is a great privilege for us and this opportunity. We'd like to thank our keynote speaker, Professor R. K. Bart, Department of Library, Information Science, University of Delhi. We'd like to thank again our seminar president, Dr. Shankar Moon, our teacher in church. Associate Professor, Department of Bengali. I know that Shukata is a very busy person in this phase of time. And uh, the all process of getting funding and something else, and all the necessary arrangements have been started to just get him off with nothing to do. And uh, at that time, our education minister has been uh, as a student to visit to our college, and uh, he has been a very busy person at that time. And we had to make to an appeal to the Rajaramu Dabe Foundation at that time. So it was a very you know, hectic schedule for all of us. And yet, apart from all the academic and administrative responsibilities, he was a person who always supported me and who, even not even a single question, he just asked me. Just say, Ori Kothe Shainu Tabe Boy. Okay, So, yeah, I'm very grateful that I got a little like you, sir. Thank you very much, Dr. Khan, for being with us. The next name is our, I am a bit frightened to say that name. I want to ask you about the question of the question. Professor Udayi Natachari, our seminar director, our professor, our mentor. In short, our name is our coach, our money and money. Town busy, so he was very busy for his academic and administrative responsibilities. Yet, whenever we call him, whenever, sir just takes the ring, and if he misses, he just rings him back. Happy with him. Teacher knows. Even sometimes we find some joke in sharing sense. This is the relationship, this is the bonding. We fall with each other. And it's not because of us, it's because of himself. We are lucky that we are having a Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Dr. Vajan Samantha, Dr. Sapun Khan, they are very phenomenal in their academic and administrative responsibilities too. They are the general secretary of the University of Delhi. Had been the general secretary and the organizing secretary of the earlier seminar happened in the last year. Yet in this year also, though I am the organizing secretary officially, but I could not even move a step further without their help. I acknowledge from the core of my heart to my gratitude to both of you. Thank you very much. And thank you from the core of my heart. Whenever I just call, Rolanda, it's a question. Ali, Ajo, Coach. Sabunda, AJ, to call. It's a question. So, AJ, to call it, it's a question. It's a question. It's a question. It's a very, very phenomenal topic. I'm very lucky to have you, brothers, like this. Thank you. Thank you, Rolanda, Dr. Rolanda Sabunda, Librarian, Rawali, and Paul Vigalai, Dr. Sapol Khan, Librarian, Dr. Sapol Khan.
In this occasion, I would like to thank and show my gratitude and our gratitude, I should say, to the, all the members of the governing body of the Yosha Memorial College. And especially our president, Mr. Kapos Chatterjee. We would like to thank our valedictory person, I mean, the person who will be delivering our valedictory address, Professor Amitabh Dhakkar, the Vice Chancellor of the German University. We would like to thank our Aperture Gentleman, Dr. Solo Mungu, librarian, Rusanthi Chandra Mahogamadis, and Assistant Secretary, Universal Gregory. We would like to thank our money man, you know, he's a money man. Dr. Thank you, So, whenever he is very, very punctual, very minute in his job. He's very efficient, very minute in his job. Whenever you need some, you need something, very good minded. If you want to talk to him, you can talk to him. It's very simple. Whatever the situation is, have a have a on it, just this is the person who is with us. We need to have a like that. He is a librarian, gentleman for women. I would like to thank all the seminar advisory committee. It's a very long list. We show our deepest gratitude to all of them, to all of our respected officials who passed in the seminar advisory committee and all the teachers. I would like to thank our internal quality assurance sales coordinator, Dr. Jodhan Mukherjee. Unfortunately, she is not here, but I invited her. She has some other additional academic assignments. Dilojio Memorial College. I would like to thank personal and on behalf of Universal Rupi, Dr. Anjana Chattopadhyay. Professor Suwana Rushamutu, they are the seminar committee governors. It's a procedure from a college that if you want to organize a seminar, you have to go through that seminar advisory committee. And they are very much helpful. Like, you know, in our college, we work like a family. Whenever we are doing something good, I mean, something, uh, such kind of seminars or workshops or any forum, we don't need anyone to function. We just let them know and yes, it is. Okay, we go ahead. So the first talk about IPR seminar, we talk in that in IPR seminar and seminar coordinator meeting. And they accepted the meeting. Dr. Sudhar Mundar is the chairperson. So, as I said, we all are in a family and we help each other to uh, flourish in this academic venture. And I'd like to thank all the staff, pardon my voice, because it's a you know, seasonal matter. I'd like to thank our Staff, Central Library, all the staff of Central Library, they are very much helpful. Pani Proto, Magnesium, Philippos, and uh, all others. Uh, I would like to thank all our volunteers of Universal Review. And I would request each and every one to just clap for them. They are phenomenal. You know? If you see this happening, this is making a reality. Because of them, they are sitting over there, they are scattered over there, somebody is sleeping also. But it is because they are so tired, they are so overworked, but still they are doing their best. They are doing their best. I personally am very much thankful to all of you. Anyways, we are very much. Thankful to our technical support team, Mr. Ovidit, Mr. Sonji, and his team members. We like to show our gratitude and very thankful to our paper presenters. Without you, this seminar would not happen. Make it a reality. Thank you for your thought uh, provoking Mr. Papers and for your presentations. We would like to thank all the participants. The German participants for your interest, and I am very much glad to share that we have a very handful number of participants. 
We would like to thank the university authority for providing us the platform, uh, the guest house, and all these arrangements. And none of this. Without them, we are just, you know, blind. We show the Jerusalem and what you call it, open access technologies, and universal community. Our deepest gratitude to our sponsors, that is Raja Ramamur Library Foundation for sponsoring us. Thank you. Thank you for trusting on us. Thank you for providing money to us. And Indian Council of Social Science Research. We are very much thankful to you. Apart from our these two sponsors, we are very much grateful to our supporters and others financial assistance that we gave from DLS Hospital. And about that, I would like to say our Dr. Subhajit Goni, he was very much helpful in making this a reality. And Open Access Foundation would like to thank him. I just deliberately took the list because I personally and on behalf of Universal Briefing, Central Library, DMC, Division of Media College, and Open Access Foundation, would like to thank and show our deepest gratitude to our invited lectures, Dr. Salim Dita Nehru. Professor, Department of Library and Information Science, Master Shah, Bukadanji, Mohammed National University, Professor R.K. Mohammed Hussain, Professor, Department of Library and Information Science, Tripura University, Tripura. Professor Tula Shankarabhav, Professor, Age, Department of Library and Information Science, India Sahaja University, Tripura, West Bengal, Dr. C.H. Mohan Singh, Professor, Department of Library and Information Science, Union University, Dr. S. Dangwangan, Deputy Librarian, Central University of Tamil Nadu, Tamil Nadu, Dr. Amit Kumar, Associate Professor in the School of Library and Information Science, Central University of Tamil Nadu, Dr. Moses Mohan Nara, Professor of Age, Department of Library and Information Science, Northeastern Yale University, Shillong. And all the well wishes. And please excuse me if I leave someone there. You are all very much precious. Your effort is very much precious for us. We are very thankful to all of them. And I would like to also thank to our online watchers who are watching live streaming right now from different corners of the world. Please stay with us, not for this seminar, for the Seminars that are going to happen, that I'm going to organize in the near future, and all the activities of Universal Briefing. Thank you, Minister. Thank you, Dr. Rai. Professor Rakesh Kumar Bhatt is a senior professor of Library and Information Science, University of Delhi. He has double doctorate degree from Dr. Ambedkar University and Agra University, Agra. He has renowned career profile and administrative assignments. He has achieved best teachers award by Special Library Association and by Society for Promotion of Library Shooter Products. His area of research interests are marketing of allies products and services, cataloging, history of libraries in India, and information system, etc. He has numerous publications in national and international level. I request Professor R. K. Patsar to deliver the keynote address. Thank you, Dr. Rai. That is the situation. Before I start uh, my you know, address, I would like to put on record the remarkable contribution of my vote of thank presenter. I think there is nothing which is left 
will come out or scientific will say everyone will be involved directly, indirectly. So, great man and great uh, achievement for quality, everything motivate everyone to be involved in this uh, Friends, it's a big deal when you are talking to the people in the world. Because the barriers become a big deal, so it's not a big deal to tell you about it. I am inspired by my friend that he is from his memory. So, I thought that he was in the world. मैं भी बोल करते हूँ क्या बोल रहे हैं ओके लेट अस लेट अस स्टार्ट आ माय जर्नी ऑफ एंड ए टीमों की आ माय लेजेंड फ्रेंड प्रोफेसर बीपी शर्मा विदार्थ जनरल आर्मेंट माय ग्रेट फ्रेंड फ्रॉम भारतवर्ष इनफैक्ट वी वर फ्रेंड फॉर द पास थर्टी थर्टी फाइव इयर्स टू मेंटल very close friend and when I came to know that Prabhakar is there, I was so thrilled that we'll have a lot of time for gossiping at the late time that we did yesterday. He is the Ewan Ewan for my chancellor, he is the professor and head of his own university. My other friend, Professor Sujan Bhattachale, I didn't know him but I met in one conference. It was hosted by none other than my student, Amit Kumar, he is the head of his own university. So he was also uh, invited and I was also invited. So first time I met with uh, Professor Bhujar uh, Bhattacharya and I found him, if I will have to figure out the gentleman available in life and emotional profession, it then happen to be in the core list of those persons. So I think the gentleman person I have found him. Then we have uh, Sakhir Mandalza, Asian Seminar, then we have Nandan, then my other colleagues, uh, Shalini was sitting over here, just like daughter to me, Amit and my friend, Bhujya Saab is sitting there. R.K. Mahapatra is also in new addition to the list of my friendship. When I happened to be in Tirpura, in one of the freshman committees in the the general department, we were to select a candidate, and uh, uh, I tried to uh, be honest enough in selecting a candidate, despite of the criticism from other members. So, see, a lot of experiences of different times uh, you, you get when you are doing. Now, uh, I thought when I uh, uh, asked uh, then what I have to do is, he said that you have to give the key note address. So, I was just thinking whether in key note address you will have to speak as to what you will have to read the address. Normally, when you are addressing the key note address, you are reading. Actually, your preparation and then you are because that is the document which opens the path for what on, on what areas and in what way the conference is going to shape and what kind of deliberation the conference is going to take place. But then I have seen my other people, uh, they in their own style has uh, uh, you know projected their viewpoint and all. I would like to speak as tempo rather than reading uh, uh, the paper in my hand. See, first of all, I would say thanks to the government of India for providing us the opportunity for celebrating Ajahnika Amrit Master, that is the 75 glorious years of our freedom movement. For you, might have not been thought of why the 75 years Ajahnika Amrit Master was to be celebrated. The government of India, the Ministry of Culture, Ministry of Education, they have given you five different, you know, revolution theme on the basis of which the Ajadika Amrit Basu was to be celebrated. The first theme was the freedom struggle. Now, in every field of knowledge, in every pair of life, in every discipline, we had to had find what their people from different segments who have really done wonderful job in for freedom movement of India. And then I think profession when I started searching in Delhi history, in the uh, one of the specialists in history of libraries, uh, one of the more area of my specialization, it was wonderful to find it out that in Barwari Public Library, which is a very dramatic situation, 
Mr. Bhagat Singh, the legend of the freedom movement of India, he used to come to that library along with his friends and certainly when they were using the library platform sitting over there, must have been preparing the strategies to see how you will be free from the hands of the British who have been involved in getting the high level of economic exploitation of this country. So what a big contribution of library as such, that library happens to be a place where the freedom fighter used to come and exchange their viewpoint. It's not a simple thing. The archival specialists will have to dig upon the information from each and every state and find it out where were the libraries and who were the contributors in real sense who have really fought for the freedom movement of India. We are sitting here in Bengal. I am very sure that Lal Bhagwan must have been using different kinds of libraries and all. Uh, the director general has gone, but I understand that the Abhya director general, Ajay Pratapti, who happens to be my student, he told me that 5,000 libraries in this country will be opened in villages. And many library professionals who are sitting over there, if you just look at the pages of foreign classification, Ranganathan has never used the term public library. Ranganathan used the local library. And local libraries happen to be those libraries in villages where the people from the community used to come and debate on it. The local newspapers were coming and the people were reading. And those platforms become the vital component for the purpose of creating awareness about the freedom movement of India and the entire country through these small village libraries become the platform from where the exchange of viewpoints of the people who were really struggling for getting the freedom and creating awareness in the society for freedom used to that. That is a very vital component which the government of India gave us and I would like uh, every library professional that in your own domain try to find it out whether in your domain there were libraries which might have been used by any freedom fighter and put on record because that kind of archival information is a legacy of the freedom fighter, the country history and what not. The second theme was given was idea that has shaped India. In 1947, when we got free, and those who must have seen the uh, uh, Radha Kishan Commission report in 1948, there were always 15 university libraries, universities in India, out of which two had gone to Pakistan after partition. Now, from there, the glorious journey, till 75 years of our celebration, thousands of university libraries are there, government and private, and thousands and thousands of colleges, and there is no uh, you know, counting of schools as such. So, we have crossed a remarkable journey and we have achieved a lot, but that need to be properly documented and that is the honor of library information professionals that the entire journey of 75 years of Ayadhi Congress Mahotsav must be recorded in one way or the other and that should be converted in the form of a document. So that was the second resolution which was given or theme which was given by the government of India for that. The third one was the job specific goals and targets. We are, we have just celebrated Ayadhi Kamri Mahotsav and the government of India has again given you the indication that we are going to be the part of Amritka. That is, 100 years of our freedom we are going to celebrate in 19, 2047. And by the time we do it, not only other disciplines, we will have to ensure by passing the resolutions, by ensuring that our profession, which is a novel profession, must be getting the recognition in the entire society which is unfortunately not up to the level as the marketers, as the educators, as the mediciners, as the engineers and so I am sorry, but you will agree with me that the image of library professions has not reached to the level which should have been. At the same time, the library profession and library professionals happen to be the people who are the real boon and know society and know 
country can think of surviving and sustaining until unless there is infrastructure factor in the information and knowledge and we all are the custodian, not only custodian but the disseminator of that information each and everybody who is making use of this piece of information for their growth and development. So that is the third thing. The fourth one is the action and policies. Let us have the concrete action and policy which we should frame that when we will be celebrating Ajati Amrit Kal, we should have concrete document in our hand to see that look, in these 25 years, these were the motives, these were the resolutions which we passed, and these are the, the documents of our achievement. And look what we have done. So we will feel proud that yes, we are the librarians, and we will feel proud that we are the best in the entire country as far as any profession is concerned. And the last was the achievements. In 75 years, what we have achieved, what we have not achieved, what we have achieved, and in what was the contribution of some people and all. I do not know how many of you are aware of that we used to talk that the public library movement started from Shahjila Jaiwan from Baroda in, in uh, 1910. But it's not the reality. The public library movement started from Kerala when Ayer, when Ayer, and Nath Bhushanam were the people who started the public library movement from there. They were the first pioneer in launching this kind of a moment and then the entire country started, you know, observing and they took the initiative for the development of public library in this country. A lot of documentation need to be done over there. Now, see, thousands of libraries are there, network systems are there and we have seen a lot of development like e-resource management has taken place, RFID has taken place, cloud computing, big data, mobile library system, and what more. These all are developments which are taking place in our profession. Yes, we should feel proud. But before we, we should feel proud on it, we have to retrospect ourselves, are we really done wonderful job in ensuring that 80% of underutilized information resources on which we have spent crores of rupees in acquiring them and they are waiting for a leader in our life. That is also a challenge before us. Simply acquiring and acquiring does not mean anything else. My colleague and I said that these are state papers until they are made from the But my dear friend, it's a hard fact. You go to any library, you will find only 20 to 25 percent in the active collection of the library which is being used. Rest of the material is unused. Why it is unused? Whether it was useless, that it was purchased. If it was useless, why it was purchased? And if it was not useless, then who is responsible that the awareness of what is available in the library has not gone to the end user of the library for which that library was maintained for there? These are certain burning issues which need to be taken care of. Then, my dear friends, as I told you, that the image improvement is very, very important, essential. And for this, we we'll have to have adopt the marketing strategies. Until this is the same thing, is the ये management का fund है. Libraries will have to adopt the management, marketing management strategy, especially the social media to make use of it. The image will be improved. I still remember that the people in the society does not know what librarians are basically doing it. It is on us on us that we should go to the open market and make the each and every person realize that look, our job is not to issue a return lot of milestones we have already achieved and what we are doing is we are creating wonders. When we are talking of big data and when we are handling this kind of a huge task, then some mechanics, some technique and some specialization needs to be. It is not something like that a villager saying that only issue and data is the job of liability and therefore the image of liabilities are not that good as it should have come. Then, the, let us come to the important issue which this conference is going to address and the, the, the conference uh, area is intellectual property right and conundrum of information manager to the conundrum of this is a very alarming, very specific, very serious term which needs to be taken care of. Now the question comes that are libraries competent to really protect the intellectual property rights? If you just for say, forget the copyright laws, then the other areas like trade, 
trademark or industrial design or fake and of how are the libraries are ready to it and then the libraries are the information provider how they will be able to ensure that the person who has taken a document from the library for getting something copied and all will be responsible for and how the library and library staff will be able to ensure that infringement of copyright laws are not taking place simply saying does not mean so we need to really communicate to the higher authorities or the people who make the laws that they should make the laws on ground really level and i am that sure that the people who have passed the copyright law they might have also not given the serious thought and they might, might have not thought of that the library or library profession will be responsible for protecting these kind of laws see i am in university of delhi and there there are copy photocopier shops at morris nagar and in front of that there is a police station a full day the central library university of delhi documents are being copied openly and we are living in a police culture where the a simple police wala would use danda for eating two bananas free of cost say why you are sitting over here with the lady and they know that this is the infringement infringement is taking place but no case is registered as far as my knowledge goes is only one case in the Kolkata library was registered against a photocopier and that too was all politically motivated but what was the effect what was the result the delhi honorable delhi high court gave the decision in favor of shopkeeper and you know what was the plea the plea was that the people who are getting xeroxing of the study material they are the students they are not the commercial person they have not copied the information for the purpose of commercial selling they are handing over information and it is the honor it is the duty of the government of india it is the duty of the university it is the duty of the society that any anybody who is handing over information should be supplied that information to you so the post this means the case is in the high court judgment i can provide you the copy of that judgment that means the librarians what can they do is that by initiating the orientation program by by creating awareness that the academic ethics need to be for the university grant commission has also given 2018 academic integrity resolution that we should propagate we should communicate we should try to create awareness among our leaders that they should follow the academic integrity they should not try to infringement the copyright law copyright law they should not not copy each other activity and now you see the copy the uh, you know tracking or duplication in form of turnitin or urkun or muglit or many other softwares are already available so the university grant commission is trying to help the library professionals and the academic fraternity that whenever some things are being created that should be under ethics the ethical and then for the research scholar one paper on ethics has been made compulsory Who are sitting as a teacher? They must be knowing that in PhD in course work, there are two essential papers. One paper on research methodology, another on academic integrity and ethics has to be taught. And third paper is the optional paper which has been given or left over for this respective department to design that paper to take care of. Okay, and then the finally the. Uh, Trip resolutions or WTO uh, treaties or the IPR uh, laws at national international community. The international community is uh, very well aware of, and they may be in much more powerful situation to implement and protect the laws. But as far as India is concerned, I am sorry, but the kind of environment in which we we work, I don't think that the life of life of professional will be able to really ensure. That the intellectual property rights can be protected. However, therefore, I request that whenever the debates and resolutions are going to be by this conference, let it be very concretely passed the resolution that the role of library professionals and libraries be defined up to what level they are going to be made responsible for ensuring the protection of intellectual property property rights. And my dear friends, at the end, let me use my The last paper, which is a formal word, and that is finally, I want to encourage everyone to take part in the talks, share your thoughts, and add to the pool of knowledge that comes out of this seminar. Let's start a journey together. 
to the future with intellectual property rights and an open society live, uh, live together peacefully, making it better for further generation. Thank you. And may our discussion lead to a future that is more compassionate and open to everyone. And at the end, thank you very much, Udyan Sahib, for inviting me over here. A month before I was there for National Library, I had gone to Delhi back immediately upon came from there. He said that you have to come. I said yesterday I landed here in Delhi from Calcutta. Now you are taking again to come. He said, no, no, I do not know you have to come. So, so, so nice of you that you have uh, given me the opportunity to interact with this kind of legacy. And I am sorry if I have said something wrong, which might have been hurted you. But I tell you one thing that apne aapko pachano. Apne aapko pachano, aap anwan ke baraabar ho. Deka pahad na asadi di na, saisa kapi upaaj gari hai. Agar jadi mukhi ni mil rahi ho, pahad yu pahad lao, ki ke kaam aap hi kar sakte hai, kyunki nori par aap bait hai. Nori par aap bait hai, nori aap determinate karte hai, aur jadi aap aisa kar paayenge, to chora si laa yongyo ke baad jo jana monushya ka mila hai, aapko saat kat rahi. आज मानी समझता नहीं जावा जीव जंतुवा चतुर्शी कक्षानी शिवेल का जीवन पूरा चौरासी लाख लोगों के बाद मनुष्य जन्म मिला और उसके भी लाइफ में प्रोफेशन मिला फील प्राउड दैट योर लाइफ इज प्रोफेशनल एंड डू समथिंग दैट योर इंडियन सोशल साइंस थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू and setting the tone for the presentations that are going to follow. Now let's refill ours with a 15 minutes tea break. See you back in precisely 15. So Rusirokhi will carry out the first technical session. Thank you.
Is this taking a station? The participants are 
Good afternoon to all of you, respected dignitaries on the dais and off the dais. Professor Arun Chakravarti, sir, the co chair of this technical session. Professor Bhat, sir, Professor Arki Mahamatra, sir, Professor Ras, sir, and all the dignitaries who are sitting off the dais, dear participants, and the organizer of this international seminar on intellectual property rights and the conundrum of information manager towards creating an open society. At the outset, I would like to congratulate the organizer for organizing such a nice program and that too on the alerting topics in this today's digital era. Because as we all know that information intellectual property rights and the open society both are in the opposite side because as an information manager or as a knowledge manager we have to deal with the different type of information and that to open access information in the open society so in that view it may be difficult as a librarian as rightly said by professor but sir it will be very difficult as a librarian, we may not, uh, what we can say, we may not uh, uh, save the copyright because as a librarian, we have to provide the information to the users, those who are reading. So from that angle, it may be difficult for us to keep the information property right, but although because we are the knowledge managers, we have to think about that, how to save the intellectual property rights so that there may not be any copyright infringement. And because in this digital era, copyright infringement is nowadays is a bit difficult because such type of era, it may be very easy for us to give the or to spread the information uh, within a single click because many of the resources that may be available for us in the open access platform. So some of the, uh, this presentation basically endeavors to thought on the various issues like what is open access or open society, then what will be the creative commons, then open licensing, then what will be the benefit of open licensing, what type of licensing we can get it when we have to apply in various platforms, then what are the various challenges when we are implementing all, all such type of open licensing in our library. So what will be the challenges we have to face it than the engaging users community or the students community. So let us go one by one uh, from this slide. As we all know, this legal protection uh, has been given by the uh, IPR. So IPR has many uh, types. Uh, in the uh, morning also, Professor Russell had said that IPR has industrial uh, designs and the trademarks and apart from that many things are there which is related with the IPRs and because IPR is providing you the right to uh, whatever you are doing some innovations, based on that innovations you are getting incentives in terms of the monetary aid or in terms of the rewards. So IPR is a very important issue. But when we are thinking about how to do it in the open access platform and how to create the open society, then we have to think about that uh, like creative commons and open licensing. Because all this open society are uh, playing a vital role in, uh, in the information society. And that's why we have to think about that how to collaborate, how to do the productivity and creativity uh, with the help of the open licensing. Because as a creator, whatever our rights are there, that we have to utilize that rights for the benefit of the society. But at the same time, we have thought about that how to use, how to make the use of information to the user so that uh, in the ethical way, the users can use that information. So from that angle, it will be very important for all of us as a librarian or as a library science professional how we can get all uh, collections into the open access platform uh, with the help of the creative commons and open licensing. 
So, uh, with this Creative Commons and Open Licensing, it will provide the legal framework and that will definitely allow uh, the creator to share their work under a set of very easy to understand licenses. So, what will be the licensing that we are going into the depth, but before that, what will be the spectrum of rights we have? Like everybody is going, the copyright, uh, which are uh, all rights are reserved, and nobody will reuse uh, that particular information is needed for that. Then, Creative Commons, some rights are reserved with the creators, but we can share it in the open access platform with some uh, permissions. So that will be the Creative Commons and some of the information which are available in the open access platform that is in the uh, public domain. So public domain, there is no right, is reserved and maybe without permission we can use it. But as a library science pro pro professional, we have to also promote about the attribution or proper attribution. Because without that, if we are not providing the, pro the proper attribution, then we may cause in the plagiarism. Okay. So, the plagiarism rule, uh, Professor Bursar is also emphasizing on that. 2018, the plagiarism regulation has come. So, we have to also create some awareness among the users that how we are, uh, uh, in, uh, how we are uh, uh, promoting the anti plagiarisms or the whatever, whatever the consequences are there related with the plagiarism. Because such type of awareness, if we are not spreading among the researcher or the uh, faculties or the users of the library, then they, they may be habitual uh, to do the plagiarism such type of thing. So from that angle, it will be very important for us how to do the, uh, uh, this uh, particular creative commons. So when we are creating something, then automatically it will be coming under the copyright and the permission for certain uh, user if you want to uh, use the copyright material, then we have to take the permission as we know. And then we have to think about the fair use of uh, fair use of the information also. But when the copyright comes, then automatically the fair use comes because the libraries they are using the fair use. Okay. So under fair use purpose or platform, we can use uh, many educational or open educational resources also, like open educational practices. We can do it. So that is coming under. We have to think about that. So where, when the traditional copyright and the Creative Commons license are uh, there, so in uh, traditional copyright, we have to think about that how we can reserve the exclusive right uh, for reproduction, then distributed copies of uh, publicly displayed, uh, like uh, uh, whatever our works are there, we have to uh, copyright it. But in Creative Commons, we are giving some rights to the uh, users, uh, rights to the licensors they can use such type of material with the help of the Creative Commons licensing. So, this Creative Commons licensing and copyright, we are assuming that people are in inherently bad and they will steal the information and that's why law came and then we have to stop uh, them for uh, doing such copyright. Then Creative Commons is good and it will be very good for the open culture because uh, uh, Professor Bursar is also saying that uh, like Professor Russell is also saying one subscription, one nation, but then there may be some difficulties in that to running or implementing. And that's why government has uh, taken back that decision. So, if as a universal briefing or there are many platforms like Open Access Bangladesh platforms, so they can suggest that how we can do such type of things where the information can be shared on the open societies or the open platforms. So for that, we need to understand what are the different copyright issues or the creative common issues from where we can share our information with the restriction of some rights which has been given to the authors or which has been given to the creators. So the uh, uh, creative commons, it will offer license and automatically the it will allow creators to retain copyright by permitting others to copy or distribute or redistribute and make the use of their work. So, for that, we have to apply for the open licensing uh, so that we can distribute it uh, uh, when we are modifying it, that particular information, when we are doing some customization into the software, then it will be very easy with the open licensing. So, there are many uh, types of open licensing that uh, we are going into the depth of the open licensing. Some of the slide I will skip because uh, 
already 15 minutes we are late and you have to pause it, you have to type. I will manage my presentation. So what is Creative Commons? It will be flexible uh, licensing, it will be given and we will do the balance between the interest of the creator and the public or the licensor. So it, uh, because they are providing the legal framework and that's why uh, the licensors have the right to distribute it or redistribute it and to spread it okay, or to designate on the public domain uh, uh, like in the Creative Commons platform. Then uh, many of the global societies, they are already doing like Open Knowledge Foundation is there, Open Access Societies are there. So they are already doing such type of work and they are sharing most of the information in the open access platform. So uh, why not uh, the, our nation, India, has to take this different responsibility to come in the open access platform. So as a library science professional, you should be also, uh, the, you, we shall think about that, how to uh, contribute in this open access platform so that the information can be available in the open societies. So open licensing, why, we, why there is a need for open licensing? Because uh, somebody has created the material and if we want to customize it uh, for uh, the student's purpose or for designating purpose uh, with the diverse, uh, we can say, diverse additions or supplementary additions with that particular material, then for that purpose, we have to go for the open licensing. So open licensing, uh, we, uh, uh, we will add the open license to work, uh, our work to let the users know which permission is granted. And the copy, uh, copyright holders specify permission in advance for certain uses of the work. So we, uh, as a open course where, open course, we widely uh, use such type of uh, permissions because we have to distribute the information. So what will be the benefit because uh, once it is in the open access platform that it, it will increase uh, the accessibility and if we adopt in the uh, libraries especially, so then automatically the users will access the information. So what type of work we can uh, like art uh, then uh, there is a one uh, sub chapter is there in this particular national seminar open culture. So, uh, how to uh, promote the open culture? So, for that, we have to take such type of actions where the increased accessibility of the information can be promoted. Then, for that, we have to also think about the collaborative learnings, uh, like uh, the research benefit, uh, which will be benefited to the students, researcher, and the uh, different educators. So, there may be the legal uh, means challenges are there when we are uh, saying that such type of uh, creative commons if we do. Some legal uh, issues are there. So, that we have to solve the legal issues and it will change really the face of the libraries or the library science professionals. We have to also think about the quality issues also because whenever we are uh, choosing the material that has to be licensed, so, such type of material, we have to choose that have the great credibility. Otherwise, uh, it may be, uh, suppose, the credibility is not there, then uh, the quality material, we are not ensuring. So, we have to also think about the quality insurance. For that also, we have to think that how to uh, get acquainted our staff about such type of licensing issues. So, staff training is important. Because if we find some policy in the libraries, what type of material we have to take for the open licensing or, or under the creative commons, then uh, we have to give the training to the staff because uh, uh, to learn that licensing uh, in, in the depth that we uh, require. Otherwise, if we are getting any license, then once it is uh, getting, then we cannot uh, uh, the uh, already the license may be in the uh, Creative Commons or on the internet and that's why it may be difficult. So, uh, the staff training is needed for such type of policy if we are applying in the uh, libraries and community engagement also uh, is required. So, digital collections we can uh, use in the libraries. There are many digital collections, even some of the public libraries or the, or the uh, museums, they might be having the rare collections, even the libraries, they are also having the rare collection. Heritage material we have, or some scholarly uh, communication also we have. So we can uh, think about that, how the digital collections can be 
uh, license or in the open license. Then uh, for that we have to think as a library science uh, teacher or educator, we have to think about that the curriculum development where all such type of things can be included so that the next generation can uh, have the awareness about that and they can also use in their libraries. So, because we have already have the open educational resources and open educational resources, they are already collaborating and innovations and equal access to the educations they are providing. So, OER work is one of the examples uh, it, it has been given. Then exploring open educational practices also, we have to think that how this educational material can be uh, do the innovations in teaching and learning strategies. So, for that, open educational resources if we are adopting then accessibility guidelines we have to develop otherwise it may be difficult to implement all such type of guidelines so accessibility uh, guidelines we have to develop quality insurance we have to think about that and uh, licensing considerations also we have to think so uh, some of the slide i will skip how to use uh, this creative common licensing uh, because uh, uh, this uh, creative common licensing we can uh, use and we can promote uh, for awareness and education. So, uh, advocacy initiative we have to take it uh, uh, through encouragement and through education and policy reforms also we have to uh, do in the library so that we can foster the culture of sharing. Then many examples are there where we can think about, the libraries can especially think about like open textbook then digital collection, then public domain work. So we have to promote all such type of uh, public domain work. And open source software in libraries, they are also important because many of the software, only the thing is the staff has to be given training how to handle the software. And at the same time, the staff has to uh, change their mindset to upskilling their skill. Otherwise, whatever the new technologies are coming into the libraries, if we are not accepting, then it may be difficult to implement it. So, uh, whenever we are thinking about the open source software, because uh, uh, to, the staff has to be adopt that open source software so that it can be run in the smooth way. So, there are many challenges when we are applying or implementing all such type of open access uh, issues or open licensing, uh, that attribution complexity, uh, we have to also give the training that how to give the attribution when we are using such type of open uh, licensing platform. Then uh, materials, metadata standards also we have to think about when uh, we are doing some open licensing, licensing compatibility also we have to think. So many best practices are there in the open access, open licensing in the libraries. Like we should develop some clear policy, how to implement, what type of implementation we have to do and how the policy will be accessible to all of us. So we have to first think about how to create or how to develop the clear policy. Uh, staff training, which we have already uh, discussed. Then community engagement is also important because whatever the community needs, uh, Professor Bibi, uh, Professor Rassar is saying that uh, previous uh, thing, Professor Rassar, uh, so local libraries, so public library world is not the local libraries. So local libraries are emphasizing more on the uh, cultural heritage or the cultural material. So how that, because uh, that cultural heritage is not available anywhere. So we have to think about that in the local uh, material we have in our library. So how to uh, do the digitization of that local material and how to uh, come in the platform of the uh, open licensing systems or creative common or even the public domain. So, as a local heritage, we have to, uh, community engagement is very, very important. Suppose we are not engaging the community, then that cannot be possible, open culture or heritage or open heritage. So, for that also, we, uh, in the open access uh, journal like UAJ, uh, many educational resources are there which are available in the open access platform. So, they are also promoting uh, the accessibility, information accessibility and they are also, but sometimes uh, they have to face some challenges like uh, financial, like uh, financial model, they have to choose and based on that, some standards also has to be chosen by the open access community. So, there are many cases which they have already implemented all such type of, but in India, 
uh, I, I uh, means many libraries, I observe that they have not implemented all such type of policies. So we have to think about that, how to implement all such type of policies. Uh, like Boston Public Library, University of uh, uh, Amsterdam, and Toronto Public Library, or even uh, you can see the University of Pittsburgh, they have developed their own uh, open access uh, or licensing or creative common policies. So how to implement everything will be available in that uh, policies, so that we have to think about that. So how to get the creative common licensing? Uh, so whenever I exit, you just uh, give me a answer. Okay, otherwise it will be going on. So how to uh, get such type of uh, creative commons already? The creative commons licenses are there and there are six type of creative commons license. You might be observing that CC is there. CC is reflecting about the creative commons, then buy for attribution and many uh, symbols are used and uh, for that. Uh, for example, buy for attribution alone, then uh, attribution plus no derivative works, attribution plus share type, attribution plus commercial, non-commercial and share type, attribution plus non-commercial and no derivative, then attribution plus non-commercial, uh, that is indicated by the buy and NC. So these are the common, uh, creative common licensing. And based on that, uh, how to get the creative common licensing, like if we are getting the CC, that means uh, we are uh, uh, using the Creative Common Licensing and it is available, but some rights are reserved with the creators, okay. So uh, uh, it will be uh, showing uh, based on the uh, particular 4.0 policy, 4.0 version has come for Creative Common. If you are seeing the website of the Creative Common watch, then you will get it. Then uh, CC by SA is there. This license will uh, enable the users to redistribute it, remix, adopt, and build the particular uh, material in any medium or format. So, such type of licensing will give the credit uh, by uh, must be given to the creator, and SA for adoption must be shared under the same terms. <coughs> then CC by NC is there. And uh, this uh, buy is also giving credit to the uh, creator and NC only for non-commercial use, the work has been permitted. So like that, we can take some licensing for our uh, like PPTs or for uh, our textbooks or for our course material and we can share it because uh, it will protect and some of the rights will be distributed. Then CC by NC, <coughs> it will show that essay for adoption must be shared under the same term. So those creators who have already adopted the term, it can be also shared with the essay, shared like. Then CC by ND is also there. ND is showing no derivative or adoption of the work are permitted. So there is no derivation. Uh, we have to uh, also think that how to take the work of the ND. Then CC uh, by NC plus ND, NC is showing only non-commercial use of the work are permitted. So there are uh, many licensing and the open licensing, most of the open licensing we are using uh, for open educational resources, that is uh, the uh, creative commons. The next licensing is that uh, CC uh, not zero, I mean CC not, so CC not will uh, showing the public domain dedication. So CC0 is uh, public uh, dedication and which enables creator to give up their copyright and put their work into the worldwide public domain. So it can be uh, represented by uh, CC cross and G. Then open software license. Uh, first, uh, we have seen that open creative common. Second, uh, we have seen that uh, particular open licenses and then open source license. So for software also we can take, those who are the creator of the software, they can take this open software license and this open software license will allow the other, uh, uh, those who are doing the customization for that particular software, then they are allowed to share that particular uh, things, particular software to others or redistribute it or, or remixing. So for this two type of uh, licenses we are requiring 
permissive license and copyright license. So, for permissive license, which are allowing us to create <coughs> permissions uh, where the code is used with few restrictions. So, for example, sometimes uh, some of the software they might be having pre uh, uh, initial stage, it will be free, but after some time then code, uh, code, some restrictions will be given to the advanced features. So like that, uh, permissive license is there. Then copy, copy left, uh, software licensing is also there. Uh, already the software creator has left the copy, uh, copyright and it is available in the domain. So then open data common licenses are there. So many attribution, many, many uh, licensing platforms are available. Open data common licenses. Here we can copy it, we can share it, we can distribute uh, the data and it will be, but only the condition is attribution has to be given, then essay has to be followed and the keep open uh, uh, will be uh, followed. Then open data common, uh, open data commons attribution <coughs> license and this license is like uh, the CC, like uh, creative commons by license. So if, uh, attribution is uh, important when we are using such type of open data. Then open data commons, public domain dedication and a license that is called PDDL. Uh, so here uh, we can share it, we can copy, distribute it, we can adopt it, we can modify, we can transform and build upon the databases. And this uh, license uh, without any other restrictions, we can functionally uh, do this uh, CCG. So before licensing, if we want to apply for licensing, we have to think about that, how uh, the, the things can be considered. We must, uh, it should be our own creation, then only we can take it, okay. Uh, we have to also control about the copyright in the work. Then make sure the material is appropriate for CC licensing. Like for example, CC license, we are not waiting for the software and we are not waiting for the hardware. For that, we have to apply for open uh, resource, open so uh, open software licensing. So we have to also think about that. Then specify what particular license you want. So first understand the licensing types, and then only you can apply. I want such type of licensing because each licensing is providing you the different platform. So there are many things which we can uh, do it for this. So for that, we what we have to do. Uh, the uh, creative commons uh, dot org is there yes yes I will change so we have to engage the students community virtual study groups we can create then interactive activities we can do it and the feedback channels or feedback mechanism has to be developed so uh, in summary I can say that we have to uh, whatever the impact are there on the libraries regarding the open access or the open society or the open licensing, we have to review it. Then collaborative partnership, we have to do it with the help of the international organization like Open Knowledge System is there and many other organization which is under the open societies. Then we have to follow the continuous uh, advocacy also. Then we have to also think about that how to make the inclusive innovations in the library and global connectivity and we can also create the positive uh, synergy also. Uh, then knowledge sharing, how we can do it and what will be the future open opportunities when we are thinking about the collaboration, innovations, then what will be the potential library ecosystem we have to think. So thank you once and all for patience with me listening and I'm very much uh, I'm very th uh, thankful to our chairman and co-chairman for giving me this opportunity and especially I'm thankful to Professor Rujan Patpajare sir. Continuously he is uh, taking pain uh, every time calling and inviting me uh, for such a uh, galaxy of the uh, professionals. So thank you once and all and thank you to Aravara also for giving me this opportunity. Uh, to come to the Calcutta, first time I'm visiting the Jadavpur University. And I'm very much interested about uh, all the type of professional activities you are doing for the uh, dissemination of knowledge and the information. And thanks to especially the universal briefing, uh, uh, 
for taking all the pains to organize such a uh, nice conference or uh, say international seminar. Uh, so whatever uh, many experts like Professor Bhatt, Professor Bhatt, Professor Aarti Mahapatra, uh, sir has given me the opportunity. So thank you much and all and thanks to the, all the participants for listening me uh, patience. Thank you. Uh, thank you, madam. I think all of you are I think, uh, we can take last opportunity. Uh, let us have a presentation. So I give my Thank you very much, uh, ma'am, for your beautiful presentation. And first of all, I am truly honored and really grateful um, for this opportunity to serve as a coach here of uh, this platform. And given the unexpected delay, I kindly uh, request uh, to the presenters uh, to keep their presentation exceptionally uh, brief. Uh, we are currently running late, uh, approximately uh, 30 minutes uh, behind the schedule, and and uh, lunch is ready and waiting and growing colder by the minutes. So in this session, uh, we are having two papers. Uh, the first paper is Creative Commons and Open License, a room for sustainable utilization of resources for the student party that will be presented by Roy C. Hodder, a librarian, and another paper uh, is Classification of Interdisciplinary Nature of Open Data and Machine Learning Approach, uh, that will be presented by Shura Mutuma. And probably Shoro Mudundar uh, is absent and he co author of the Tapun Marvin will present this paper. And uh, the next paper uh, is uh, Accessibility Right of Different Day Tablet Taking Under Indian Corporate Law by Gustav uh, Bus Chakraborty, a librarian system of the community. And the last paper is a conceptional. Exploration of Creative Commons and Open License by Ananya Bose, a uh, student of Emily YC, Jamalpur University. Uh, so I would like to request uh, Joyce T. Kaprum, librarian Jerry Miller Institute of Kolkata, for uh, his presentation. Joyce T. Uh, to share their work, to 
is the one for the public domain. So that the uh, active soil body can be used and reuse and uh, re produce, also redistribute the work. Then I can uh, tell about the uh, license design. There is three layers of the uh, license. One of the legal form, you can see there is some more legal things are there, like uh, legal professional uh, things. And it precisely outlines English right and restriction regarding the license work. And the second layer is common name, which is human readable layer, and third one is machine readable for that is for computer. And uh, there is six types of license under PD Commons. First, there is four elements, and uh, combining these four elements, so the six licenses are made. These are uh, by, by, and the second one is KCSLI and NC non commercial and ND non derivative. Here you can see in this image the first one is uh, uh, CC by. You can read it attribution CC by. It allows users to redistribute, remix, and adapt and expand upon the material in any video or format. As long as proper attribution is provided to the original creator, like by. By is the attributor, and in case an entry license under the CC, by is the attribution, it is, it is imported. Then the second one is CC by SA. Can read attribution sale line and this allows user uh, to modify the work for any purpose, including the commercial use also. Uh, sorry for the interruption. Uh, actually, these things uh, covered, covered by Charlie Map, so you better skip this one and come directly to the content. Okay. Here in this slide, you can see there is a, a copy and copy is uh, used by the by this license for the cost of CC by CC by SA, CC by NC, CC by NB. And there is some flaws like attribution and root word in the public domain CC here. There is no attribution root word, but as said by men, uh, we are library professionals, so we have to get the attribution to the field. And uh, yes. There is CC by NC, this is commercial use, and uh, there is no origin uh, see commercial use in this box that, that license is by key. And I think there is by NC, SA, commercial use is not allowed, and the change license. Whereas SA is uh, there, so you can change the license. And when it's NC, it's this one, there's the content of the original document. Open ground project also, the they use the CC, open 
any license for their project. And for the, with the help of this license, we can provide the documents and for the, the provide the documents to the public and they can use, reuse. So, you can sustain our sources for the future. Thank you so much for your Thank you. Uh, I would request uh, Professor Sarkin, Madam, to sign over uh, this small token. Thank you, Josie, for your wonderful presentation. Um, next paper uh, is classification of intelligent theory uh, on nature of open data literature of machine learning approaches by Dr. Barbie. Uh, he is a assistant professor in the Department of Bioinformatics and Science. Uh, one thing I must tell you to the audience is that uh, we were friends, still friends, and uh, where he is working now, actually, the university is my alma mater. Uh, I have been there, uh, I did my BLI, and I have been known also to serve this university as a teacher for four years. Part of the 
in the contemporary world it is very much discussed, but it is also written, mentioned by one scholar in their paper in 2015. So in this way, we have also actually tried to collect the data of what the source, uh, the educational uh, institution, government organization, and non-profit organization did give so many data that could be taken open data and making it a generation. What is the potentiality of this particular data? Transparency, innovation, and public engagement is very much crucial aspect of this. Here, some interdisciplinary nature and types of files available in the scopus database. I have tried to bring it to you. And <coughs> yes, I am just going to write more into this particular thing. What are the research questions we have planned for that particular paper? Research question one What are the domain and subject found in the publication related to the open data? In the scopus database, what is the domain and subject we found? But number one, and research questions we try to resolve it. And to what extent the publication on, on open data shows the interdisciplinary nature among the various subjects we are trying to find, find out these things also. And how to so, different classification models, the machine learning different classification models are there. So, these uh, models that we use, how these different, uh, different kinds of classification models are formed in classification, classifying subject based on title and abstract, not only the title. Right, as well as in the subject, and then there is that context of the open, open uh, data research. So, what is the methodology? I have already told you that from the, uh, from the Scopus database, uh, and from up to 2022, we have collected 3,170 uh, 3, files in the CSV file, CSV format, and some tools also used, Google Sheets also used, and the Python is also used. For data processing and marking and uh, my organization of the data, as well as the analysis and the, and the visualization purpose, which also takes so many tools available in this So, here we have found that the open data publication over the year of the such kind of data is a lot to count. So here, the publication uh, was from 2003 and uh, the peak award is 2016 to 2018 and uh, the highest funding is in 2011, all are actually discussed in our full paper. So these types of things are also found uh, in this session. As already our students that time in so I just the last part, the one part, this is the subject and scale are actually defined 25 subjects and of 40 topics. If the 25 subjects, these are the 25,000 subjects, and we found that the computer science is the highest value in the paper. And after that, there is social science. Social science people are, are also in the computer science. And the social science people are also contributing to the research paper uh, in this thing. So, subject distribution in relationship, I'm using so many tools, you know. So, I don't want to use the keyword, the keyword, uh, uh, keyword location, this kind of thing. And machine learning analysis here, we found that all the all the subject and interdisciplinary subjects are, uh, are activated or not, and uh, how much, how, what is the different kinds of accuracy is there? We are trying to find that and we found that the most of the uh, subject subjects are classified by this this thing, the uh, machine learning approach, machine learning approach. We found that the model with the existing model, they can perform their work uh, in detail. Not that the accuracy, more than 70% accuracy is there. So more than 70% accuracy is very accurate, but to require much more, uh, more platform, uh, more improvement in this regard, then we, are, we will be destroyed, we will, you know, we will classify the interdisciplinary subject with the help of machine learning. 
concept of visibility and we all know that visibility means the limitation of persons movement senses or activities of disadvantaged con con condition is the lack of activity ability of a person to perform activities considered as disability so the term disability may be confused with the other terms like impairment of handicap so basically the honorable prime minister of india has coined the term dipangal and in case in this case the role of the inclusive society is very much important and there are various types of disabilities which i i cannot discuss because i cannot uh, come between you you uh, my topic and your lunch so directly i am going to the uh, my objectives of my study that is the first objective is to highlight the problems of access to copyright works of the differently able people second one is the to explore the rights of differently able people under the lenses of indian copyright law so the basically the there are some problems of access to copyright works for the visually impaired students are the restriction of copyright they cannot access to the full text material or uh, and the next one is the optional nature of limitation as exception there are some resources are not fully available some are partially available next one is the restriction of types of work some restriction on there are some restriction on printed books braille books are not available for those restriction of accessible formats so there are There, therefore, various types of formats we have to create. Fifth one is restriction of purposes of use. There is restriction of beneficiaries, digital rights management and access, remuneration rights holder, commercial activity as well as the transmission and cross-border exchange of ideas. And now, if we critically we have analyzed the various types of copyright laws and uh, in the uh, in the scenario of the people with disability. Now, if we analyze the copyright law. We can see that in India, prior to and copyright and amendment two thousand twelve, there are no provision for the persons with disability. But after two thousand twelve amendments, there are some provisions for the persons with disabilities. So and they are they are following the international convention like WIPO, Partners Treaty, WIPO Partners and Phonogram Treaty, as well as the international UNESCO international treaties for the persons with disability. Now we can, or if we analyze the compulsory license for the benefit of the disabled, the section two fifty two prohibits the convention of copyright works on a prohibited basis. Any person of an organization who is apply for a license for the copyright work. So there are uh, various provision like section thirty one b, the uh, section thirty six b, so which I am not uh, going to discuss during to time constraint. Now the if we analyze the rights of persons with disability at two thousand and sixteen, as well as the Geneva Convention two thousand and six, therefore they they have, they have mentioned the specific guidelines for the persons with disabilities like respect for inherent dignity. non discrimination full and effective participation and inclusion in the society equality of opportunity accessibility and equality between man and woman so another one is the martas treaty and if we see the analyze the that treaty also less than 10% of the public works are made available globally in accessible format and in the developing world 90% of the blind as well as the people with disabilities receive the treaty is less than only 1 to 2% So the problem is partly due to the limitation created by the copyright law. So the Marta Treaty facilitated access to public works for the persons who are blind, visually impaired, or otherwise being disabled. So this is to enter into the focus on the 30th September 2016. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now if we conclude by uh, conclude by our paper is that there is no provision. In the copyright regime, in the amendment in the copyright act in the year 2012, to provide for the exception, facilitating education and specific provision for the use of copyrighted works by persons with disability. In light of absence of such a provision, the life of differently abled people technically and legally bound died. So, in 2013, we put past the Marta's Treaty to facilitate access to public works for the persons who are blind or visually impaired or the print disabled. So that does the purpose of disability act to the same extent is safeguarded by the amendment copyright act. Thank you. Thank you, Christopher, for your uh, timely conclusion. Uh, though he hasn't given uh, speech yet, but uh, he can engage the audience beautifully. Uh, thank you. The last paper in this session. 
uh, is a conceptual exploration of beauty found and open license by Ananna Bose. Ananna, a student of MD by C. तो ओपन
Thank you. Uh, uh, there is no question. Uh, I think uh, this session is uh, good, and uh, we know that creative commons and open licensing uh, revolutionize uh, the way content creators share their thoughts and work by providing a legal framework. Uh, that allow others to use the air and to learn. So, I think uh, there are so many uh, the parameters are there, and that has been covered by uh, speci specifically uh, Alina and uh, Apunbal, uh, and of course, uh, Alan. So, uh, I would like to uh, request uh, Dr. Um, so everybody is waiting for lunch. The concluding is over. Only I want to tell you one thing that IPR, which was not in the other constitution, so it was a 44th amendment which came under the Article 19. That means when the IPR came because the uh, idea it was in a property, then yeah, the individual property also become a constitution because we know that anything under without constitution without money. That's the thing you know, that that's what we are all now concerned about these things. And number two is that in the IPR, what you have now, oh, in Bengal in a kind of uh, order that my chore ko bolo, chori karne ke liye, our police ko bolo, alert karne ke liye. So here we are, we are telling that we are giving you all free, free, free. Uh, so the librarian job is that we are giving free of resources, open resources, the creative common, all common things are giving. And then but we are uh, yeah, uh, giving you another software that is a design yeah, software is there. So you will have to check it, whatever you cut and paste, you have to check it from there. So that's the story, uh, you know, both ways it work, works. But you have it, the librarian, uh, if you come to the librarian, then you will tell me that how to do that to you. That how we will tell that because the people do not know that the all the resources which are available online or free that is maybe 25 years or 30 years old the resources are on online. But if you go the literature before the in a, in a, in a national library, the article, uh, literature are available from 1450. So if you go the 1450 to 2000 uh, 2010 20, you can see that the whatever is copied, the people are not able to catch it. Number one. Number two, that there are 40, 18 Indian languages, uh, 21 Indian languages resources are available. So, 21, uh, if you are doing the research on the languages, there is no copyright, no copy yeah, you cannot yeah, catch out of them. So, you translate it. So, you have a friend of Tamil and Telugu, and then they transfer this one, and then English, Tamil, English, Tamil, that way. So, that is, it's a really, we have to know that. What does it mean? It means that the Mongol, or whatever the IPR, that means we have to obey, we have to think that how we respect the people. That is the most how we respect the people. Because if we copy from somebody, we should just chori karana or chori karana, no problem there. We can do it and we cannot do it. So that means ethical question. That's all I feel. I think that we have a huge uh, excellent discussion and all. Thank you for everybody waiting for lunch. So I will uh, request uh, one by one um, yes. speaker that say yes. yes. Joyce, <laughs> 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 Most of the food.
session, there is only one present judge, that is uh, Dr. Mom Chattopadhyay. So I request our chairperson to thank you. So we have no Actually, we have one presenter, Indrani Dr. MLRS student from India's OU Kolkata. Now I request our chairperson to carry out the sessions. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I know it's been a very sumptuous lunch, and then if you come to know that there are no presenters, it's a great occasion to speak. So, but then I don't think so. I'm going to allow that thing to happen because we have uh, at least one presenter. If not any presenters, then we can definitely have a discussion on what was planned because I have with me. Very senior academician, uh, Professor Moitro, and then very, very senior academicians are sitting in this August gathering. And we have very, very, also, we are we just been followed by a very important talk by one of the very uh, experienced surgeon, Dr. Singhal, who is with us from PLS Hospital. So, uh, the reason why we are having this intellectual property night and uh, the session which we wanted that what is this intellectual property like and why is it important because you know whether you believe it or not uh, knowledge is money when we say this maybe in an institution like Jadavpur University it might be contradictory where we believe that knowledge should be free knowledge should be and easily accessible something like healthcare I always equate knowledge like healthcare because we always believe that health and education is basic right and it cannot be compartmentalized to people who have the access or the accessibility to get it. But whether we like it or we don't like it, the knowledge driven industries have compartmentalized knowledge into their own profit and benefit. And as a result of this, the intellectual property right, this particular domain has grown. And uh, whether you will believe it or not, there are many companies which are working in this very own city as well as in the country which work for intellectual property right. So patents are the basic things which everybody is fighting for and patents why people would like to have a patent? You know, this is a big question, a million dollar question. Why patents are granted and why so much of headache is there on patents? Because patents gives you the exclusivity to use that knowledge. And sometimes this knowledge is utilized for commercial purpose. The biggest example is seen in the pharmaceutical industry. There are many other industries, you know, you can also see other industries like in case of the, uh, I, I come from healthcare management, will be able to give better examples, but also in publishing industries, especially where people are publishing, they get exclusive royalty. And the reason why intellectual property has become so important, because there is so much of copy paste culture, which is generated across the entire uh, spectrum. If I come back to healthcare, healthcare, everybody of you have taken medicines. Yes or not? Is there anybody sitting in this uh, August gathering who has not taken a single pill? Is there anybody, I'm sure you have taken one or two pills in your life. Now you will be the entire pill business which you are taking how many of you actually look into that pill and try to figure out whether this is an innovator product or this is a quote unquote product which is by the 
copy make uh, the the generic product or the from the from the uh, pharmaceutical company which has copied the patent now i should not use the word copied it is actually patented product or the reference product and then you have the generic product the biggest example of this will be the uh, i i give the simplest example in case of paracetamol do you know which company first came out with paracetamol because we first which is the first company which came out with paracetamol any cases nobody knows this because we are using we are used to taking paracetamol 50 paisa a tablet but it a happen after a chinta government je paracetamol tablet jo on eschilo the first company which discovered paracetamol is glaxo smith kline beecham gsk and do you know what was the price of paracetamol when it came out how much was it in the united kingdom that was one strip used to cost 10 pounds which had one strip had 10 metal 10 uh, tablets মানে একটা ট্যাবলেটের দাম ছিল একটা পাউন্ড আজকে একটা পাউন্ডের কস্টিং হচ্ছে টুডে 1 পাউন্ড ইজ কস্টিং রাফলি 90 রুপিস 95 কলকাতা শহরে 95 রুপিস এ প্যারাসিটামল যদি বিক্রি হয় একটা ট্যাবলেটে আপনারা কি করবেন আস্তে আস্তে সবাই বল বসে বল एवरीबॉडी विल सिट ऑन द बोर्ड সো ওয়াই দিস ইজ अलाउड এন্ড ওয়াই দিস ইজ नॉट अलाउड The reason is because when the drug came out into the market, when the pharmaceutical companies do so much of research, they spend a lot of money. Any guesses on how much money is involved in development of one product? One product means one product which comes out in the market. I give you a statistics. Out of ten thousand molecules which are tested in the chemistry lab, the whole chemistry lab is also going to cut down. Out of that ten thousand molecules, ten will enter clinical trials. Ten thousand and ten. If I am not sure, which one will get the most money? What is the pass percentage? For less than one percent of them will pass. Less than one percent will pass to enter the human clinical trials. Out of that ten, only one will come to the market. That is the pass percentage. So out of ten thousand. one will see the market but the company which is investing will keep on investing from day one they will invest 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 they come to us amra amar at a certain function in pls is to do this drug research clinical trials when we partner with doctors like dr singhal where if they are doing some new breast cancer no to breast cancer we will go no oshud ashu to amra Phase two, phase three, phase four clinical trial. I am not going to go into that. You know, they are doing a task force. They are doing it. Coming back to the discussion, before COVID nineteen, a particular medicine which was developed in the USA, which had to clear phase three clinical trial, costed two point five billion US dollars. Two point five billion, not million, billion US dollars. And I am not here on behalf of any pharma company to or to speak about that whether patents are required or not required. I am here to be just to give you the prelude of this uh, important session. I am very it's very unfortunate that people are not here to present their ideas. But this is a burning topic whether patents are required or patents should be uh, given away. 2.5 billion dollars during after all of you come from a very different specialty you come from an academic background now think like a ceo of a pharma company chief executive officer of a pharma company you have 2.5 billion us dollars in your company do you want to spend this for only one year or you want to spend this for at least 15 to 20 years so that you can make 5 billion 6 billion 7 billion anybody knows the answer and that is the reason the government gives a patent that you whatever you spent on r&d research and development you must get back that money now the other half of the story is that companies when they get this particular kind of a patent they show exclusivity 
they demand market leadership. They say that you will have to buy it from us. We will not give it to anybody else. Here brings a big discussion in a socialist country like India, in a country like India where we have the haves and have-nots, in a country like India which has India and Bhagat together, in a country like India where only the government is spending 2% of the GDP on healthcare, whereas countries like United States is spending 20% of the GDP. In a country like India where 50% of the Indian population only has health insurance, 50% does not have health insurance. Can a breast cancer saving drug be 1 lakh to 1.5 lakhs per month? Is that allowed? Is it ethical? Even if the patent is granted? There comes the discussion between finance on one hand, ethics, morality, accessibility, affordability on the other hand. And in our country we have seen when these kind of discussions happen, the government has got special powers. We know with the special power known as compulsory licensing. But the government will overrule the patent act. And for the benefit of millions and millions of patients, it has been done previously, I think Dr. Singhal will be able to give better uh, response to this, that for the millions of patients who are not able to access the breast cancer drug or the drug which is used in case of cancer patients which are very expensive, the government will allow the generic product to come out, meaning copycat allow of it. Because it is ethical. This is a discussion we were expecting in this IPR session. Intellectual property right is your intellectual means your thought process is protected and protection is for what reason? Because you get motivated. When I say you means the researchers get motivated to do something new. Otherwise, you don't have to do এবং সেই রান্নাটাকে আপনি এক্সক্লুসিভলি আপনার দোকান থেকে বিক্রি করতে চাইছেন পাশের বাড়ি দিদি এসে দেনে নিয়ে চলে গেল সেই রান্নাটা আর বাজারে ছেড়ে দিল কেউ আপনার জিনিস কিনবে কেউই কিনবে না সো দিস ইজ আ মেকানিজম বাই হুইচ প্রোটেকশন টু দ্য ট্যালেন্ট ইজ গিভেন প্রোটেকশন টু ইওর ইন্টেলেকচুয়াল থট ইজ গিভেন প্রোটেকশন টু প্রমোট থিংকিং এন্ড অ্যাবস্ট্রাক্ট থিংকিং ইজ গিভেন now the question is how much it is allowed in a country like India where we have disparities. So there are many rules, regulations which are there, I am not going to get into details but I can tell you that all researchers who are sitting here must file for patents because it is a ruthless world. Don't trust anybody. I am sorry to tell this word, don't trust anybody. Because if you have an out-of-the-world idea, the idea will get stolen. And it will be stolen not by you or not by your friend. It can be stolen by anybody who you trust the most. So how do you do that? You must form a team. You must conceptualize the idea. There are government sites where you will have to apply for your ideas and get your patents. Because with patents, your idea gets immortalized with you. And now you can utilize that patent for the benefit of mankind and definitely for the benefit of yours. I think uh, I saw one session, I don't know if this uh, session is going to be done or not. Is this lady speaking? She's not well. Is anybody, is anybody speaking in this session? Yes. Do we have any speaker? Yes, very good. Please come, we will hear you and after that we will have the discussion. So let me tell you, it's a very burning topic. There cannot be a simple yes that patents are required. There cannot be a simple no that in a country like India, patents are not required. What about a particular research? The biggest example where no publishing house was allowed to keep any information to themselves was a COVID-19 pandemic. If you see, if you go to any medical literature database, after there were very senior librarians are sitting here. 
COVID-19 was the biggest example that when world needs data, then no patents or no intellectual property rights or no idea issues come into place because everything was made open access. Every journal was made open access. Whatever was published in any GM or whatever was published in case of the British Medical Journal or whatever was published in the Australian Journal or for example in the Indian Journal of Medical Research which is not an open access journal was available to anybody and everybody in the world even if you are sitting in Antarctica. Why? Because people promoted free information exchange because we wanted to defeat the pandemic. I hope that we have the same uh, synchronous approach for many other diseases. Unfortunately, it is not happening because the Western world's priority and our priorities are totally different. The Western world thinks that certain things are important to them. Our world is different from them. Our problems are different. They are not bothered about our problems. Sometimes they are bothered. Sometimes they are bothered, which was an example, I would say, when COVID-19, then we all work together. Else, if you still see malaria vaccine information, is published in one of the journals which is not available to many Indian scientists. Because you have to pay a $35 or a $40 to get the full text articles. So it is highly unethical. In countries like where the malaria problem is going on, they should be made easily available. But we are not allowing it in the name of intellectual property. So these are few questions which bothers me. Let us now invite uh, our speaker to speak and after that, Madam, I think we can then discuss further. Good afternoon, respected professors and doctors. Uh, actually, uh, issue personal issues, you know, I mean, uh, I'm not present to Pachina. Innovations in healthcare include 
the quality and delivering the medical care and the quality of life for millions of people around the world. अपने तो जानते पड़ चुके जो medical literature patent कौन-कौन था बोलो जो अपने तो भी बोलो medicine की नहीं जब वो कुल brand vaccine जो भी की नहीं का सिक्का company medicine जो भी उन्होंने की नहीं अपने उन्नत company थे जो ये company तो लोगे अपने देश ही choose करने कारण ये बोलो अपने तो known company ये बोलो इधर patent था अपने जानी इधर शॉप था हमारे तक से अनेक पुरी चीज ताई उन्हें रेफर कोई जरा ये लोगों मेडिसिन उन्हें कोट चल जरा ये कंपनी बुलो जिनको उन्हें कोई चीज तो मेडिसिन कंपनी अपने शे कंपनी बुलो की रेफर कोई पेटेंट शुद्ध मेडिकल मेडिसिन के रूपों नॉट पेटेंट शुद्ध पाता चला हुआ है मेडिकल इंस्ट्रूमेंट जी इंस्ट्रूमेंट तो अपने डॉक्टर So thank you. You mentioned about NLM, the National uh, Library of Medicine. It is maintained in which country? USA. So again, a statistics here that medical USA very beginning only they have understood that if you have to because you know US, uh, if you really think about United States mentality, the United States always have monopolized markets. And they have monopolized the markets by understanding the fact that any information which is generated will re generate revenue. Because information sharing will generate revenue. Now the biggest example of this is the National Library of Medicine. The, what we call in our medical uh, terms when doctors speak is the PubMed Index. PubMed. PubMed. Yes. Now database, why do you think they have got so interest to build a database which has millions of journals? Anybody in the audience, can, can anybody give this answer? Why do you think USA is interested to maintain this database? It's one of the first countries to maintain this kind of a database. What are the advantages? Maybe I'll ask my speaker, can a database to maintain to a Yearly improvement both there? One is research and development. So they come to know they are the first country in the world who will come to know what is being developed where because that has been published. So it is you publish, but you don't keep it to yourself, you send it to my database. So I am knowing. What is happening in India, even if the Indian government is not new. So I can target that particular researcher and bring it to my country. Anything else? Any other any other thought for this? See, that is there, madam. Past, present, and future again with the mindset of future research or targeting future researchers. Anything else? This the medical librarians or the librarians must know why databases are important. Because maintenance of database generates revenue for the government. The NLM, it charges a certain revenue from all the journals who have to be PubMed index. Even if you are paying $100, if there are millions of journals on that, can you imagine million into 100, that much amount of revenue is coming to that country. And whoever has, you know, what, what is the advantage with US? US, everybody says a lot of money. Why US has got money? Because they have strategized in the right way. They have been the first to understand that we will have to sell knowledge. Knowledge has to be sold knowledge has to be not made easily accessible. Because the moment if you go, you show the preliminary information that this is the important literature related to you, you are tempted to go to that literature. It will take you to that particular website and then it will say pay $35. So it is also telling the journal that if you showcase, it is like the Amazon, of our today's world. All of you have Amazon in your smartphones, all the young people have Amazon on their smartphone. 
Even if you don't buy anything, someday you will eventually buy something from them. So it is showing that if you are searching something and you have thirty dollars in your pocket, you will eventually end up spending that thirty dollars. Then again, to library, the ye thirty dollars you have spent for that now, it will take a lot of effort to do it. It's a very strategic thought process which they have taken in the field of intellectual property right. There's a huge component of revenue, a huge component of finance, huge component of business development, huge component of strategy which is there. Anything else? Why do you think the NLM is so preferred? They have made this mandatory as a part of promotion, with by. Taking many of the good universities with them, that if you publish, but any publication will not matter. Only publication which has a PubMed Index journal will matter for getting your next promotion. So it's like a cycle. You will have to enter that cycle. Okay. So these are few things you will have to highlight when you are talking about a medical literature database. Few more things about PubMed. PubMed now has this very important characteristics of also showing you similar articles. If you are searching for, say, for example, breast can carcinoma, breast cancer, and the use of breast cancer survival surgeries, not only will the most recent article be shown, but also they will show related articles to that. So you get tempted to move to those directions. It has made the referencing bibliography very easy for researchers because you can cite, download all those things from there, right? Madam, you want to add something? Thank you. Thank you. First of all, I would like to thank you, Dr. Shubhrajati, for me to. Contribute his uh, valuable time in our professional domain because we are library and information science subject uh, prosecutors. So we are the teachers, librarians together here today, and I thank Universal Briefing and especially Udayan to, to give me this opportunity to come in this uh, front and speak before you. Uh, sir has nicely explained uh, about the patents. So, when I was talking about patent, I was talking about the patent. So, I was talking about the anti-plagiarism and plagiarism. I was talking about the patent in 2008. I was talking about the plagiarism in 2008. I was talking about the IPR. So, I was talking about the patent and I was talking about the patent. तार अजूस्त्रों गाने विदेशी शूले प्रोचुर प्रो। शिता अपना शब्द गाय हो। ये तो क्यों कोनों दिन भाभी नहीं जे इतना चार शूट टा वो खान के की चुरी को रहने एक भल पड़ा हुआ है। तो शेरा कोनों दिन हमारे मूल्य वाशी। आज के जुगे दाई है जिकने हम लोग भाग ची व्हेन वी आर थिंकिंग अबाउट the unauthentic, unreferenced quotations and use of details. जी आगे काज करेगा चल ताके जोखिश्चु सम्मान ना दिए तार रेफरेंस टके आम्रा यूज ना करे छोटा छोटी आइडल कॉपी पेस ताना होले बैडर प्रेसी और ताना होले स्पीडीज एवं स्पीडीज जे कहीं नहीं बोलो कि जो जो सीना मत को अपना ना देख चल जे स्पीडीज जे बाय बोले छेड़ दवा होए इनको जेके होते
সেখানেও কিন্তু আমরা পরম্পরা বাদকে মনে রাখছি এবং গুরুকুল সিস্টেম অফ এডুকেশন যেটা মেডিসিন সেটাতেও কিন্তু সেই নারী ধরে এখনো কয়েকজন ডাক্তার আছেন যারা নারীটা ধরে লিখে দেন কি কি প্রবলেম হয়েছে তারপরে দেখিয়ে দেবেন এই প্রবলেম দেখো তোমার মিলছে কিনা তোমার টেস্টের সাথে এবং দেখা যায় যে সেগুলো সব কিন্তু এরকম সৌভাগ্যক্রমে আমার একটু কম বয়সের সময় আমি একজন মানে ডক্টরকে মিট করেছিলাম मेरा चल्लिस
एथिक्स इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एथिक्स डाइल्यूशन के लिए अपन यही छोटो बॉयज के लिए आशा आरंभ है जितना के काम देन ताहुले हम ही बोल रहे हैं बिगर अनएथिकल डायलेमल डायलेमास आर वेटिंग फॉर अस इफ दे इफ दे बिकम थीसीस गाइड्स देमसेल्फ or they can be guides for many other things they can be public policy makers so then it is a big big problem so as an indian i think we should stop this this is a minimum duty we can do for our own country that uh, stop unethical research stop uh, research which does not have uh, compliance to intellectual property right amader kintu nijer awareness ta nijekei barate hobe this much we as teachers Also, must be updated on what regulatory changes are coming by the government, are coming and is brought in by the government. Because I am very sorry to say this, because we take I I take a lot of sessions with our senior medical professors also. Uh, you know, uh, we have somehow believe that the knowledge we acquired in our life ceases to be updated at by the time we are forty forty five. In fact, is the other way around. When you're forty, forty-five, it's a new world which has started. The world has actually changed. New regulations have come. New way of printing uh, has come. New way of intellectual thinking has come. The moment you have stopped updating yourself, you have stopped living. So with this, we keep living, keep doing the good work, and always be ethical. With this, I end the session. Thank you to Dr. Bhattacharya, Dr. Bhattacharya, once again for this session and. Uh, Thank you, sir. Now I request our honourable chairperson to present a pen drive to the presenter, Mr. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson, Co-Chairperson, and the presenter of this session. We are very much enriched by this session. The next session, the technical session, will be continued by Joya Sharma. <laughs>
এখন পিয়ার কাছে যদি কিছু দাম করে উঠা হবে আমার কিছু পিয়ার আর আমার
my bangla is not very polished so please forgive me if i say something wrong so when we talk about breast cancer now that the moment amra cancer er kotha boli the first thing that comes to our mind is only uh, fear bhoy and especially for a female the first thing that comes to her mind is that probably she will have to lose her breast so that is a very big psychosocial impact on her but times have changed the whole treatment of breast cancer act on one ki notun notun suvidha notun treatment has evolved that has not only tried to save patients breast but also overall survival so jokhani uh, when we say cancer but what exactly is cancer so keu bole it is like an infection somebody says it's like a tumor somebody says it's some kitano but what exactly is cancer so it is nothing but it is we all know what a cell is so when the cell does not uh, grow in a proportionate way then it becomes a big huge lump and becomes a tumor so we all know that our ears are supposed to reproduce in a particular way and give us uh, this proportion size of the ear when it grows rampantly we probably call it as a tumor and it is nothing but probably a cancer so uh, when we talk about maybe 10 years down the lane the most common cancer worldwide was not breast cancer especially among the women cervical cancer the world was some cervical cancer was leading the race into acute breast cancer become the most common now what could be the reasons for all that uh, one of the reasons could be we have very good vaccines since we are talking about pharmaceutical companies they were very very good in spreading awareness about cervical cancer vaccines and with the new go this government is also promoting in uh, spreading awareness about cervical cancer vaccines so one portion can be that the vaccines are helped cervical cancer to come down the other could be that the breast cancer incidence has been reduced now at the bull dharma ache ekhane we all feel that breast cancer is only associated with women but it is not so approximately 1.3% in the population it has been seen that male breast cancer also persists now the male breast cancer is more uh, uh, serious that because if you see males they don't have a lot of breast tissue and that leads to the breast uh, cancer spreading very fast and it's very aggressive so uh, if we talk about uh, some robocon figures actually it is one in eight women who will have cancer this one out of four individuals uh, will have cancer will be among the breast cancer population among the uh, women who have cancer population so women who have already had breast cancer is the most commonly uh, known cancer followed by cervical cancer see the, these are just few numbers in india and it is rapidly growing there is rapidly increasing number of breast cancers in india i'm sure uh, most of you are sitting here will know somebody in your family who has suffered or might be suffering from breast cancer as of now so these are some statistics where they say that every a woman dies in every 10 minutes only because of breast cancer and in the uh, uh, india is facing a very challenging situation when in 2016 we saw approximately 118000 new cases of breast cancer and uh, if there are 100 cancers being diagnosed in one day approximately 13 cancers are only breast cancers now cancer to pure body the hoy there is oral cancer lung cancer stomach cancer but if 30% out of 100 is breast cancer then then that, that definitely is something that we should look uh, look into i got uh, since uh, dr mumik was talking about the western population that western proper population has different priorities so in india in the south east population we have seen that uh, breast cancer is more towards the younger age group whereas the western population targets more towards the post menopausal age group they have a different perspective all together they are more towards screening catching a small disease in india we see uh, breast cancer that are absolutely advanced age disease in two can know why why do we get to advanced age diseases that is because most of the females they are embarrassed they have or a lodger file to come to a doctor plus uh, they are always between the household chores so they feel if i go to a doctor and the doctor gives me an 8 to 9 months treatment probably i will not be able to take care of my son who will give who will give him the or in the school who will pack lunch for my husband so ultimately they end up not going to the doctor thinking it theek aache dekha jabe dekha jabe and they come to a stage where that they cannot wait to go to the doctor but why does it happen in india again we are only talking about india that is because of the inadequate screening that we have all the western population the uk population they have less population for them it is very easy to do a screening post 40 everybody can undergo mammogram ultrasound they have a very robust insurance which is led by the government but in india because of the huge population we don't have that so we cannot have a screening population for all plus if we go a little just outside kolkata we see they don't have sufficient good medical infrastructure which is contrary to the western population now i could after jodi jigesh for with 
and what are the biggest risks again on a patient ra bole ami nanotan korabo na karon oi radiation diye amar breast cancer hoye jabe kintu it is again a myth it is very limited radiation so please undergo screening see these are just few stages of breast cancer 1 2 3 4 where the later you come to us the less is the survival uh advanced stage has low survival in india 60% which is quite a big number you come to us in stage 3 and stage 4 so why are we talking so much about stage 3 stage 4 stage 1 stage 2 so that you can undergo early detection so that you know we can do minimal and the new data is less is more the less we do for you the better for you <coughs> so how do we do the screening the screening is divided into three parts one is which you can do it on your own it's a very easy step once in a month you can do a self breast examination if you think you have something you can come to a doctor get a clinical breast examination and if required we get a screening number and all right done so these are two self breast examination steps anyone who's interested can ask me personally i can tell you how to go about it or you can just go to youtube or you can go on google and you can find how to go about it so when we talk about the screening mammogram now this tumor looks very big to you but this is a very very small tumor and this patient was able to undergo a breast conserving surgery and uh, she uh, it, it, she was diagnosed with 20 years back and she is absolutely fine now so prevention is better than cure can you know about the breast cancer breast cancer early early detection ho chi after a key coded pare as a doctor we can help you when you come to us even if you come to us at the stage 4 we will help you as much as possible but what can you do reduce the extra weight it's very easy in this population to just you know open your phone order from swiggy zomato it's very easy maybe once in a week what we used to do once in a week the younger generation is doing maybe four times in a week it's difficult for them to cook just order swiggy you get the food in 10 minutes but no you can limit down your junk food you can make it probably once a week or twice a week but that has to be a conscious effort it won't happen till you want to do it exercise regularly একটা দিনে 24 ঘন্টা থাকে ওর মধ্যে যদি 30 মিনিটস আপনারা নিজেদের জন্য দেয় দ্যাট ওন্ট বি এনাফ মেবি স্কি হাফ এন আওয়ার লেস বাট হাফ এন আওয়ার ইউ ক্যান ডু সাম ফর্ম অফ এক্সারসাইজ जस्ट ডু এনিথিং जस्ट ওয়াক জগ যোগা পিলাটিস হোয়াটএভার ইউ লাইক টেক আ ফ্রেন্ড গো অন আ ওয়াক বাট এক্সারসাইজ হ্যাজ শোন দ্যাট ইট রিডিউসেস দ্য রিস্ক অফ হ্যাভিং আ ক্যান্সার এন্ড দোজ হু অলরেডি হ্যাজ আ ক্যান্সার উইল নট হ্যাভ আ রেফারেন্স দেয়ার বি রিডাকশন অফ অ্যাপ্রক্সিমেটলি 35% অফ দ্য ক্যান্সার রিস্ক দে হ্যাজ বিন আ হাই প্রপোর্শন অফ ক্যান্সার ইন ওবিস উইমেন we already spoke about balance diet cut down on your carbs cut down on swiggy zomato eat healthy food it has been seen that uh, less breast feeding also has few risk factors of breast cancer so it does not mean that you are not breast fed so you will have breast cancer i'm not saying don't have alcohol if you're going to a social party have it but don't make it a point that you have to have it regularly So again, how will this early detection help? So the best treatment for any carcinoma would be a surgery, and uh, we will be able to save your breasts. And 90% of the patients will probably not even require chemotherapy. So uh, thank you so much, and uh, this is something I would really like you to emphasize on. I mean, I know we have a mixed population. Those uh, who have anybody at home, who are mothers, sisters, friends, please go home. you must have seen this movie of salman khan where he tells i have dealt with your poor health through poor people so i have told you something i am hoping you will go back home and spread this to three four more people and that way you know we can spread this awareness for early detection and there is no harm please come to the doctor if you not advise something that is unnecessary thank you fantastic <laughs> Yeah, any questions, questions you can ask me. Uh, if you want to ask me personally, you can ask me personally as well. Yeah, please. Is it related to some of the number of babies? No, not at all. But uh, it's not good for the women to have dental babies. <laughs> yes. <laughs> What is this OCP? Can you tell? OCP is an oral contraceptive pill, so, so it combines progesterone and estrogen. So your hormonal balance in a menstrual cycle in a thirty-day cycle is different. Sometimes your progesterone is high, sometimes your estrogen is high. So OCP should also be moderated as per the doctor, as per your needs. And uh, postmenopausal, all these hormones they have a fall. 
So we put them on hormone therapy, those who have those postmenopausal symptoms. So sometimes it has been seen, the breast and the ovaries are all linked together. So one hormone in the ovary will have an impact on the breast. So whatever you are doing, you please do it after taking a consult from your doctor, not as per your own choice. When somebody is, because in today's world, uh, the young women, they want to have their career and then have children later. So usually they will be on an oral contraceptive pill, say starting when she's 25 and she gives it up at 35 or 36. Does that make her a... Uh, yes. Does, uh, does, does that make her a high factor. risk? And why will it be she on a risk factor? She's already uh, suppressing her ovaries for a very long time. So basically that will suppress the ovaries, that will change your whole menstrual cycle. You are uh, pushing your body to more progesterone, more estrogen. Your breast tissues have progesterone and estrogen receptors that will be targeted more. So why go for a like you have barrier methods? There are other methods of contraception which you can opt for. So basically, if you are in the young uh, women who are sitting in the room, if you are on oral contraceptive pills, I mean, you, so you are actually a, a, a your risk might be higher than women who are on other methods. But that does not mean you will definitely have breast cancer. No, it doesn't mean yes. risk. You are risk for that probability. probability, probability is more. Yes. The probability is more. Okay. No, what I'm saying you can take that, but always consult your doctor. Yeah. Every medicine is a patient tailor. Which patient requires which medicine, in how much doses, how many days. Yeah. Yeah. Consult your doctor and take whatever you want to do. Thank you. I have one question. If you have, if any patient has a uh, she, uh, is uh, she more threatened towards breast cancer? No, so cervical cancer does not have an association with breast. Ovarian cancer has. The genes that I was talking was BRCA1, BRCA2. What now we are seeing is the younger population is having more genetic mutation. So somebody who has a BRCA1, BRCA2 mutation, we just don't operate on the breasts. Once their reproductive life cycle is family is complete, they remove their ovaries. Because ovary is something that is inside your inside your abdomen and it is difficult to diagnose it early. So preventively we remove the ovaries. So this is a very long topic of conversation which is a different conversation which is genetics. Where we remove the ovaries preventively so that the patient does not have ovarian cancer. Ovarian cancer. Uh, for that maybe we can have another session and just talk about the genetics. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, I would like to thank Dr. Singh for such an enlightening talk, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be helpful for many of us. Now we are going to begin our third technical session. The theme of the session is government initiatives towards ideas in India and abroad. So besides for this session, we are pleased to have with us. Professor and head of the Department of Library and Information Science and the former Vice Chancellor of Liberal University. And Dr. Muhammad Rumi, Associate Professor and head of the Department of New Geo Memorial College, Kolkata, and the co chairperson of the table. I would like to request both Professor Ross. And Dr. We are also privileged to have Professor R.K. Mohapatro, Professor and Head of the Department of Library and Information Science, Tripura University, and the invited speaker of this technical session. I would like to request Professor Mohapatro to take his seat on the dais. Dr. Mugwa Kumi is an Associate Professor of English Language and Literature at the Osio Memorial College, Dadar Hart, for the past 16 years. 
Missionary Shinasta and Radius Faculty at Lesbeho State University for the past two years. Dr. Gobi possesses six years of experience in doctoral research, focusing on energy and European classics and modernist literature. Her areas of research interest include modernism, postcolonialism, cultural studies, Dalit literature, and political literature. Her scholarly achievements are reflected in a prolific publication report, including articles in journals, conference proceedings, books, and as the editor of books. Dr. Gomi's multifaceted accomplishments underscore her significant contribution to the field of English literature. Professor Uvita Kumar Mohapatro is a renowned personality in the field of library information science. He is currently serving as a professor in the Department of Library and Information Science at Tripura University. Formerly, he had held positions such as professor and principal at the College of Library and Information Science, SMIT, and librarian at Bloomfield College, Odisha. His extensive educational background includes a PhD land from the University of Hyderabad, PhD in Library and Information Science from Benham University, MLISC from Andhra University, DLISC, LLB in Law, MA in Public Administration, and BCom from Benham University. Dr. Mahapatka has provided many PhD thesis, MP, and Master's dissertations. His areas of research interests include research methodology, information seeking behavior, library automation, digital library initiatives, and bibliometric studies. His scholarly contributions are reflected in numerous publications in international and national journals, books, book chapters, conferences, and interviews. Dr. Mahapatra stands as a seasonal accommodation and research making notable strides in the field of library and information science. I request our volunteers to felicitate Dr. Gomi and Professor Mohammad.
expert, uh, Professor Kemal Patra. So in this section, what are the government of India initiatives towards IPI? And uh, there are all together um, six papers. So just quickly, if you can make it, um, intellectual property rights by uh, Palam Krita Dutta, present. Present, first one. Okay, now I request Professor Arke Mahapatra to present his uh, email data. Thank you very much. Dr. Nuan and Dr. It's my privilege that I will be here to share my ideas on this international seminar on the IPR Inter Institutional Property Rights that is being organized by the Universal Briefing with the other sponsors that we had in the other group. So I have been assigned to speak on the topic that is intellectual property rights, government initiatives in India and So whenever we talk about the uh, uh, speaking on the intellectual property rights on the development, government initiatives to enter in India and abroad, then it speaks about the development uh, in the by the government of India and uh, abroad. And then it is a trend. It is for the historical history. What is the economic subject? Or it's called as a chronological initiative by uh, taken by the government of India and uh, abroad. So, uh, by talking about, before I'm uh, giving my uh, ideas on the initiative taken by the government of India and uh, abroad, so let me just uh, give an emphasis on the uh, what is the intellectual property and what are the types of intellectual property that comes under the intellectual property rights and the brief history of the intellectual property So, to talk about a we one more uh, because it is already uh, many sessions have been conducted. Uh, if you are aware of that, what is the intellectual property rights? But uh, to give you the brief idea about what is the intellectual property rights, it is the brainchild of others. And it is the fruits of the fruits and labor of the of the creators. And through the intellectual property, we can arrive because intellectual property means whenever you are you are contributing your efforts to create something, to create something new. And if somebody will take the fruit of this your creation, then who will protect you? So if the intellectual property rights give the right, or give you the right to protect your property. Although there are two types of properties are there, tangible property and intangible property. And this uh, intellectual property rights comes under the intangible property. Although we cannot feel it, we cannot see it, uh, see it but you can you cannot see the intellectual the intelligent intellect of a person. But when the intellect of a person is uh, comes in uh, form of a thing, form of a, a particular uh, a vapor you are writing or in the musical things you are composing. Okay, so these become the intangible, intangible products. Okay. And these are being protected by the, uh, protected by the uh, very uh, agencies are there, governments are there, and government initiatives are there to protect your property. So the Supreme Court has given the, uh, is, uh, 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 appeal that, that the, the intellectual property means is the brainchild of the theater, some brainchild of the owners. And it's the fruits of the labor of the so I am not going to uh, the concept of the intellectual property rights because uh, my area for uh, giving you the details about the what are the initiatives taken by the government of India and the So before uh, talking about the initiatives, so let me uh, talk about the, why we need to promote the intellectual property rights. So the reason for promoting the intellectual property is the progress of the group human to remind uh, in the ability to create and invent new uh, new works in the field of technology and such. If you are not going to protect uh, uh, your property, then nobody will come forward. Suppose your property is stolen by others. Okay. Then 
then how you are secure? So you are not, you, you are not secure of what you are doing about your creations. So uh, the intellectual property right gives you the secure of your uh, your property, and so that it encourages you to uh, go for new creations. And the second one is uh, protection encourages publication, distribution, and disclosure of the creation to public rather than keeping in the keeping in the secret. And it promotes the economical development of who, and generates new jobs, industries, and in, uh, improve the quality of life also. And it helps the balance, balancing between the interest and the public interest, your interest and the public interest also. And it provides an environment where innovation, create and you know, invention can uh, flourish uh, and uh, benefit to all. So when you protect somebody's proper property, the creator's property, then it creates, it gives an encouragement. So, and it uh, will say it, it flourishes to the creators, one creator, one creator to another creator for uh, creating the new invention and new. So, these are the uh, type of your uh, intellectual properties. So, the patent, uh, uh, patents, the trademarks, the copyrights, the industrial designs, the industrial uh, indications, then your geographical indications, then the plant varieties. And the layout design and the integrated surface. So, what is a patent here? So, patent is a government quality, uh, authority, and the licensing of what we can write to, uh, write to and the life for a period of time, title for a period of time, especially to, uh, the sole right to exist other than the uh, making. So, I am not uh, elaborating all these things. So, patent, trademark, copyright, and industrial design, and WPD indicated and then patent variety. <coughs> so now coming to the main point, the contribution the initiative taken by the abroad. So the uh, you may uh, uh, recall the uh, that the Ban Convention. The Ban Convention spent in the Ban, the formally in the international convention for the protection of written in an artistic work, international copyright agreement adopted by an international conference uh, and at Ban. In 1886, that means since in 1886, the Ban Convention, they come forward to protect in the intellectual property right. And this uh, Ban Convention was modified in the uh, Berlin in 1908, in the Rome in 1948, and Brussels in 1948, and Stockholm in 1957, and Paris Conference in uh, 1971. So, this is the correct one, 1971. Okay. So during the convention, so there is a change of this uh, patent uh, every the IPR uh, particular, and uh, the treaties, particularly the treaties uh, uh, held at Paris, given rise to the protection of the Berlin Protection as well as the Paris Convention, that it works out on the recognition in the IP right and uh, were signed in the numerous countries. So the Berlin Convention and the Paris Convention lead to signed by the almost all uh, more than 128 countries. Uh, to participate in this uh, initiative taken by the Bern and the Paris Club. And in the year 1967, the World Intellectual Property Organization, that is the LIPO. So it was established to, by the United Nations that is a uh, global forum for intellectual property services, policy and information and cooperation. So LIPO before came forward to protect uh, the uh, intellectual property right. And uh, uh, we will go through the history of the WIPO so that you can know what are the uh, changes that have been made by the uh, WIPO to contribute to the initiative taken by the global funders. So this is the history of the WIPO. So where uh, the, the WIPO taken the challenges for protecting the intellectual property, right? That in the 1886 uh, Paris Convention, uh, the changes come out. In 1886, one uh, convention that was came out. In 1891, that the Madrid Agreement, it also uh, given an initiative to the uh, intellectual property right. And in 1993, that's called Vipri. So that's the durex of the, uh, the intellectual property right. It also took an initiative to the intellectual property right. Then in 1970, uh, and again, uh, that's called uh, uh, Vipri changed to the Vipo, that is in 1970. And other changes came, came about in 1978, in 1994, and 1998, and uh, 2007. That's the WIPO development agenda adopted. 
that uh, people uh, normally adopted the development of uh, agenda with the only uh, issue some that is uh, the issue for the taking the issues of the uh, intellectual property rights. And coming to the Indian contest, the development taken place uh, on the uh, contributing to the intellectual property rights. The Indian Copyright Act enacted in 1967, which was amended in 1984 and 1992 and 1994 amendment. In response to the communication, broadcasting new technology computer applications in the communication. And in 1999, that is the 11 point response made the copyright act fully compatible with the trade related aspects of intellectual property type and secure settlement. And there are eight categories of the work protected by the copyright. So that's the literary work, dramatic work, musical work, artistic work, film, then sound recording, broadcasting work, and typographical work. So all are related to the development of the Indian context. And you know these are the initiatives taken periodically by the government of India. That is in 1947 patent and design act came in 1911. Although it came in 1911, but the, uh, uh, the, the act was enacted in 1947. And in 1995, the India joins with the, that's the, uh, that the World Trade Organization, that's the WTO. And in 1998, India joins the Paris Convention. Then 1999. The, the, the patent amendment provided EMR that is retrospective from the uh, that's called 1995. Then in the 2023, the second amendment of the patent act came out. Then the, in terms of patent, 20 years and uh, uh, after 18 years, uh, publication was accepted as a intellectual property protecting the patent. And the patent tribunal uh, uh, set up uh, patent tribunal uh, appellate court was also set up in the medical uh, chain. The Patent Act of Amendment time to time the year 1995 and 1999, 2002 and 2005 to meet the obligation under the Trips Agreement to protect the patents. In 2005, the Patent Amendment also came out. Then subsequently, the rules of the Patent Act have been uh, amended, becoming the effective from the May 2023. And uh, these are the patent came. Patent, uh, patent development and coming to the trademark, the trademark and uh, we call the trademark the copyrighted updated that the, the GI uh, registry set up in the Chennai IPA Trips complements. And the trademark in 1991 uh, that is uh, came in the force in the 2023. So 2003. The copyright act in 1957 that is revised uh, in the time to time by uh, copyright amendment in 2012, the design act came in 2000, 2000. then uh, your uh, geographical indication of rules, uh, that all came in uh, 1999, then the protection of plant varieties and farmer sector came in 2001, that is uh, coming under the agricultural cooperation, okay. then the semiconductor act, that is the IC related uh, layout design, that came in uh, the uh, 2000, that is uh, under the information technology. Then the design act 2000 uh, came out by the industrial policy and the promotions. Then the biological uh, diversity act came in the 2002. Then, uh, and the latest uh, IP at the board exercised the power of authority that is established in 2003. Uh, that, the national information policy that is the 2016. Okay. The policy was adopted by the six members chaired by the retired judge Prabhakar Devan. The Indian cabinet was approved in 2016. The national policy of intellectual property rights slogan is Creative India and Innovative India. The slogan is subsequent by the uh, subsequent by aligned different uh, government initiative and vision in recent times. Make in India, then uh, uh, all uh, in, uh, then innovation visions, and start up India, then stand up India. And the major challenges uh, are there in the uh, you know, taking up the intellectual property rights uh, comes in the uh, particularly uh, the patent the evergreen uh, prevent, uh, preventions, then subsidies of uh, subsidies in the IPR issues, then the product of uh, patent processes, then the protecting the intellectual knowledges and uh, uh, compulsory licensing and drug uh, policy control, 
on the uh, particular IP resources. And the landmark uh, cases in IPR in India, uh, that is called, uh, there are uh, many example cases are there uh, which have uh, taken place uh, to protect the, uh, to further protect the intellectual property rights. That is called uh, the Vishwanathan Prasad uh, Rajeshyam versus uh, the Hindustan uh, uh, Metal in, uh, Industries, that is uh, in uh, 1979, and another Arvi Anand and, uh, versus the Deluxe uh, Film, uh, that is under. Uh, uh, that's called 1978. Then uh, Cadilla Healthcare uh, versus uh, Cadilla Pharmaceutical. That was in uh, uh, 2001. Then uh, another one is uh, uh, the Burlington uh, Home Shipping versus the uh, Rajani uh, uh, Chipa. That's called uh, uh, in 1995. And other is the MD. That's called uh, DM Entertainment Private Limited versus the Baby Grill House and others. That's the uh, in 2002, and uh, uh, that's the uh, and particularly the uh, above cases give a uh, impetus or to the intellectual property right. So in uh, conclu coming to the conclusion, the world is threatening by the policy. Every uh, that's the every industry in the world should be threatened uh, uh, by the policy. Then China is the most copyright violated country in the world. In United States comes in the second. Every country in the world must be uh, must implement their own national policy of intellectual property rights. And all intellectual property organizations have a take the responsibility to start up the proper implementation of uh, national uh, policies. Uh, now uh, 189 members have been taken uh, in the repo, and further it should be initiated to be taken by other countries to getting entered into the repo so that uh, the intellectual property can be uh, restored by the uh, countries. Thank you, thank you very much. So I have a uh, great privilege to finish, uh, uh, being here to share my ideas here. So thank you to Mr. Udayan Bhattacharya, in particular the uh, Universal Rating for inviting me to share my views. Thank you, thank you. Thank you to the team. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, it was really very enlightening and you know the kind of information that you gave so detailed and the historical mapping that you brought in that is really lovely. Thank you so much. Uh, so uh, we would quickly move on to uh, the session with the paper presenters. Uh, we both the chairs, we have decided that we would keep it brief since of course you can understand that there is a dearth of time. So maybe please request all the paper presenters to restrain their uh, presentation within five to six minutes. Okay, so I think that will be suitable enough. So uh, welcome all the presenters here. The first presenter whom we have today is Olumprita Dotko. Yes. Uh, welcome Olumprita and all the best. Okay, Olumkita Dotto, she is librarian in Brahmo uh, Valika Shikha Loy, Kolkata, and she is currently pursuing her PhD from the University of Kolkata. Uh, and the title of her paper is Intellectual Property Rights and Government Initiatives Towards IPO in India and Student Study. and welcome to today's seminar. So in a world where uh, ideas are the currency of progress, protecting uh, intellectual property becomes a paramount. So today our spotlight is on uh, IPR and government initiatives in India. So we will dive into the core of innovation, examining the significance of IPR and how our government's initiatives play a pivotal role in fostering a culture of creativity and protection. So let's explore together the uh, dynamic landscape where ideas need legal frameworks shaping the future of innovation in our country. So let us start with the introduction. What is intellectual property? What does it mean? You can skip certain things. Okay. 
Please come to your what do you want to say address the audience. Yes, sir. Uh, so, uh, intellectual property refers to the unique and distinctive works of creativity that has been created by an individual. And what are the intellectual property rights? It is the legal protection for creations of the mind, such as inventions, artistic works, and so on. Uh, and here are some uh, concept description of some of the intellectual property. Those are patents, copyrights, trademarks, and trade secrets. That has already, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That has already described uh, very beautifully. So I am skipping this part. And uh, here are uh, you, uh, you can see some of the types of intellectual property in India. So uh, here are some objectives of the intellectual property. Uh, those are to preserve the originality and ownership of each person's creation and so on. And here are some uh, significance of IPR. IPR rights, sorry, intellectual property rights give concerned individuals, authorities, countries, institutions, or organizations, incentives as well as recognition. IPR guarantee a higher standard of living and promote innovation as well. So coming to the next slide, IPR landscape in India. The key legislations are some of some of the key legislations are here. Those are Patents Act that was enacted in 1970, Copyright Act, which was amended in 1957, and Trademarks Act, which was enacted in 1999. So here are some government initiatives towards the IPR. It is to spread awareness and facilitating support and to promote IPR in ICT domain and so on. Some of the uh, major international treaties signed by India, those are the convention establishing the WIPO, the Paris Convention, the Bird Convention, and so on. And here are some objectives of the Center of Excellence in Intellectual Property. So coming to the IPR awareness, uh, uh, here are some uh, major points that I am reading out. In honor of the history of Amrit Mahotsav, the office of CGPDTM developed the National Intellectual Property Awareness Mission, uh, which can be, uh, we can call the PUMP. And during the period of uh, 8 December 2021 to 31st July 2022, the following milestones have been achieved by them. And also, the NCRT Commerce Curriculum for uh, Class 12 includes content of IPR, also NCRT's handbook on Entrepreneurship for Northeast region will feature a chapter on IPR, Innovation and Creative Works. And here are some salient features of the scheme, as well as uh, the implementation of IPR policies. So uh, there are definitely some challenges in IPR protection. The limited uh, awareness, uh, definitely the uh, awareness is very limited there, and all the procedures and legal processes are very uh, lengthy and time consuming. Also, there are uh, ambiguities in the legal frameworks. And coming to the next slide, which is the uh, case studies, uh, here are the most uh, important two of them. I'm reading out only. The fourth point is, as you can see, ISRO's cryogenic engine technology, patents protect ISRO's uh, cryogenic engine tech, facilitating uh, entry into the global satellite launch market. And the fifth one is Bajaj Auto versus TVS Motor. Bombay High Court ruled in favor of Bajaj in a design patent infringement case, highlighting the importance of design, uh, of design patents. <coughs> so finally, I'm concluding my presentation. India's commitment to adopting uh, two global standards is evident in initiatives like the na uh, National IPR Policy, show showcasing its dedication in fostering a conducive environment for IP. As the IPR uh, landscape continues to evolve, maintaining this balance is crucial for sustained economic development and global competitiveness. And there are some references and some websites I have mentioned from which I could collect my uh, data, all the data. Thank you, thank you so much, all of you. Thank you, Arun Krita. Uh, may I call upon the next speaker, Vishu Dipatacharya, librarian in the this topic is government initiatives towards IPR policy in India and innovation for India. Good evening everyone, my topic
topic is government initiative towards IPR policy in India and innovation driven growth. Intellectual property is the creation of human intellect like literary, artistic, technical or scientific creation. I am not going through the in-depth definition of this because it has been already discussed. I am coming to the objectives of my study. The objective my study to, of my study is to discuss the IPR policy of the government to protect the work of human mind, to find out the initiative of various ministries to promote innovation and support IPR, to identify the measures taken to achieve the goal, Creative India, Innovative India, to find out the role of IPR in innovation driven growth, to highlight the performance of India in Global Innovation Index. <coughs> The Department of Promotion of Industry and Internet Trade under the Ministry of Commerce and Industry adopted the National Intellectual Property Rights Policy of India in 2016. The main goal of this policy is Creative India, Innovative India. It has certain objectives that which those are IPR awareness, its outreach and promotion, generation of IPRs, legal and legislative framework, administration and management, commercialization of IPR, enforcement and adjudication, human capital development. Other major government initi initiative towards IPR in India are the METI measures. They have established the Center for Excellence in Intellectual Property, providing IP facilities and support to METI societies and grantee institutions providing financial support to startups and SMEs for international patent filing through SIP EIT scheme, creating IPR awareness through financial support to industry bodies and academia, providing health services for IPR, development of patent analysis management system portal. Department of Industrial Policy and Planning, Ministry of Commerce and Industry Government in India have taken certain steps for the development of IPR, creation of highly transparent, e-enabled, efficient and accessible IP ecosystem in India which provides legal certainty to the industry, transparency and dissemination of information, 50% fee reduction for the MSMEs, operationalization of the Madrid Protocol for international protection of trademarks in 90 countries by filing a single application at the trademark registry organizing IP training, national and international seminars, workshops, promoting e-learning resources as a part of IPR awareness program through National Intellectual Property Awareness Mission or NIPM. Ministry of Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises or MSMEs for enhancing the awareness of intellectual property rights have catered to certain objectives, increase the number of IP filings, both in India and abroad, developing synergies with state government schemes and private institutions to expand the IP footprint, showcasing government of India support mechanism and felicitation, sorry, facilitation to IPFCs, sensitizing and familiarization of the process of filing, acquiring and commercialization of IP assets, provide a platform for MSMEs, showcase their innovation and creativity. Now, innovation driven growth. Innovation driven growth is a framework to collect ideas, involve people, manage those ideas, measure its impact in the society, and use those innovations as a lever for growth of the nation. Innovation is always necessary to adopt and overcome the challenges of change. IPR plays a key role to encourage innovation and creativity by providing the protection to invest in research and development and to encourage fair competition in the market. Global Innovation Index 2022 was prepared under the direction of Director General of WIPO with the theme of Future of Innovation Driven Growth. Performance of 132 countries is taken into consideration by analyzing them in various aspects and ranking was prepared as per their performance. Here we can see in this table India's yeah. performance in global in innovation <coughs> index. Let's come to your last part. Yes, sir. Just one second. We post global innovation index showing our countries 
continuous improvement in innovation performance because of various good policies of the government. India now ranks in 14th position, 40th position in Global Innovation India rankings. A significant improve comparing to 2015, where it was in 81st place. India ranks first in lower middle income group innovation economies and also in Central and Southern Asian countries by overtaking Vietnam. India has improved immensely in the field of knowledge diffusion, where it currently ranks 15, and in creative output, it has also improved from 95th rank to 50, 52nd rank. Now coming to the conclusion, intellectual property rights in India is regulated by several laws, rules and regulations under various ministries and it's necessary to keep coordination among those so that conflict can be avoided. The present IPR policy aimed to integrate IP as a policy and strategic tool in the development of the nation. Over the past few years, the government has taken various positive steps to strengthen the IPR regime by using latest technologies, promoting IP literacy and awareness in classroom across the country and implementing various new laws or amendment of old laws wherever necessary. Still, some more attention should be taken in certain areas like knowledge sharing and access, better enforcement of the policy to attract more foreign investment and especially Indian government to major flexible programs, making India and Startup India need more innovation ecosystem and safeguarding so that it can flourish and the goal of IPR policy can be achieved. Thank you. Thank you, Vishwati. Uh, it was a very, you know, very enriching kind of session and the way you presented about India's growth and the way India is emerging, we all feel proud to be in place. So thank you. Okay, uh, the next speaker, may I invite Shuli Shengupta, librarian, GMSN Mahavidyalaya. Her topic is uh, cyber sporting, pitfalls and safeguarding a discussion. Can we please move it closer to the microphone? Yeah. A very good afternoon to all of you. My topic is cyber squatting, pitfalls, and safeguarding discussion. All of you must agree with me that the digital age is a boon for us. It opened up a world where creativity, communication system is very much under our reach. But it comes with some nuances also. One of these is cyber spotting. What is cyber spotting? It is a form of online trademark infringement and intellectual property abuse which can mar your hard work and creativity in respectively in the internet platform. I'm a technical person, so let us try to understand the concept of cyber security in a very simplified manner. For this, our objective is to try to understand concept and evolution of Evolution of cyber squatting, different types of cyber squatting, pitfalls of cyber squatting, safeguarding measures, and role of library. So, what is cyber squatting? There are two terms cyber and squat. All the health engineers must know the term squat, it is a form of exercise. So, to keep your body fit, you are using squats. But in case of cyber world, it is a nuance. 
and Saroj Kotick is also known as domain <coughs> name is Kotick. What is the domain name? You have to understand the domain name system for understanding the Saroj Kotick. You can see in the picture that first one HTTPS colon slash slash is a protocol and www that is worldwide web is a subdomain. You cannot change, cannot change these two, but the domain name and the top level domain you can change. And here comes the cyber squatters who are preying on these two terms. How? They are intentionally using similar terms to capture a domain name. Perhaps you have heard about PETA, that is paper for the ethical treatment of animals. One case is there that some cyber squatters and using that new data to promote the activity people for eating tasty animals. So there is hell and heaven difference between the two concepts. And then the exploiting typing errors. Sometimes we misspell some terms when we search in the website. And this can mislead us to a cyber squatter website. Then holding the blending trademarks with generic terms. You can see in the slide also the brand name is Amazon and the cyber squatters are using some generic terms with the brand name to lead you to their sites, which is not authentic. Then holding domains for ransom. Sometimes cyber squatters are using technology to capture your website, your legal website. Your, you have put your hard work and money behind that, behind creation. But cyber squatters are capturing those and again they are trying to capture money from your site. And misleading content. Sometimes they put some misleading contents in their website so that you are alert to their website. Then there is incidents of phishing and fraud. They do promotions and illegal activities to, to their cyber squatted websites. Targeting celebrity names which is very much in our digital world happening very frequently that so many popular celebrity names comes with these fraud and phishing activity. Damage to brand reputation. Cyber squatters intentionally targeting your website, your domain name to damage your reputation, your brand value for gaining benefit from your loss. Then mass registration and domain warehousing. The cyber, the cyber squatters are warehousing the domain names which is very much similar to your original uh, domain name so that they can later on make benefit out of those domain names and reselling these domains at an inflated price which is also known as domain flipping so that they can target your brand value your reputation, your work, your hard working in just a few clicks. The three forms of cyber squatting, damage of reputation, unnecessary confusion for the user, phishing and fraud, bad impact on brand value and size. Let us look from the point of the library. What happens in case of cyber squatting? So, there are various legal frameworks to combat with cyber squatting, like Uniform Domain Name Dispute Resolution Policy, Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers, Anti Cyber Squatting Consumer Protection Act. And in India, we have Information Technology Act, the Trademark Act, the Arbitration and Conciliation Act, dot .in Registry and dot .in Dispute Resolution Policy to combat with. 
cyber security. So, what are the measures we can take to protect from the cyber security? Again, I am talking about I'm talking from my point of a library. Uh, libraries should protect proactively register their relevant domain names, including the common variations and potential misspellings to prevent cybersquats from exploiting their brand. Digital, digital monitoring is needed because only then you can detect any cybersquatting incidents. Then educate your library staff users so that they can recognize which website is legal and which is the cyber sculpture website so they may not enter that cyber sculpture's website and educate your users about the legal frameworks if anything happens in, in case of cyber sculpture they can contact it and establish partnership with domain name registrars to streamline the process of reporting and addressing the potential incidences and regularly update your software and database so that you are compliant with the latest technology to detect any cyber squatting incidents. And always publicize your official channels in social media, in your institutional website so that users are aware of your legal website and engage the library community to create awareness about cyber squatting risks and educate users how to verify the authenticity of online resources. So there is no single process to combat cyber squatting. You have to have follow the multifaceted approach, which I have mentioned earlier. <coughs> so, in a digital era, it is integral for a library to be on online. So, whether it is public library or academic library, you have to have your presence in the online. So, if you want to protect your brand value, then you have to follow multifaceted approach to combat cyber. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Um, it was very informative, and even the measures that you talked about, those are very pertinent. Uh, primarily because of the fact that the kind of age that we are in now, that at every moment we, we need to be very careful users. So that that is why I mean, it was a very handy kind of presentation that it was very useful. Thank you. Okay, uh, we would. Quickly moving to the next presentation, probably it will be a joint presentation of Gandhi Dhali, who is a research scholar in the Department of Library and Information Science, University of North Bengal, and Dr. Tobon Bani, Assistant Professor, DLIS, University of North Bengal. Okay. Yeah. Will it be a joint presentation or will you be presenting? Oh, all right. So our topic is understanding IPR trends in sustainable digital libraries over the last two decades, a uh, cytometric approach. Good afternoon, one and all present over here. Myself, Gwadi Dali, research scholar at the University of North Bengal, is going to show you a presentation on understanding IPR trends in sustainable digital libraries over the last two decades, a scientometric approach. And my co-author and guide is Dr. Tobin Bawi, Assistant Professor, Department of Library and Information Science, University of North Bengal. Now, uh, I'm going to uh, start my presentation. Yes, uh, in this uh, introduction part, I have uh, covered topics such as digital rights management, cyber technology, digital libraries, digital preservation, intellectual property rights, etc. I'm not going to elaborate it. 
Coming to my next slide, that is objectives of the study. This study's primary goal is to use bibliometric indicators to evaluate uh, trends in scholarly publications uh, related to intellectual property rights in sustainable digital libraries between 2004 and 2023. The study's aim is to achieve the following specific objectives. These are to analyze and evaluate the trends of scholarly communication on IPR and SDL over the last 20 years, to identify new areas and clusters within IPR in SDL by conducting a co-occurrence analysis of keyword research publications, to examine the characteristics and contributions of top five highly cited papers on IPR in SDL, to measure the strength and direction of a linear relationship between the pairs of variables using the Spearman's rank correlation. Uh, coming to my next slide, that is methodology. In methodology, my first part is data collection and methods. In this part, the study used the Scopus database to collect bibliographic data on intellectual property rights and digital libraries over the last 20 years. As of December 26, 2023, the Scopus Advanced Search has obtained 1,836 papers between 2004 and 2023. A manual screening procedure was used to identify relevant publications and uh, 1,646 relevant papers uh, were added to the research divided into articles, conference papers and book chapters. Next, uh, data analysis in this part. Uh, the study uses four key components. These are trend analysis, keyword coherence for cluster analysis, examining highly cited papers, and Spearman's rank correlation. It provides a chronological uh, landscape of publication and uses MS Excel, Google Sheet, R Software, and Plusbeard for analysis. The top five highly cited papers on IPR in SDL are identified and a qualitative analysis of publications from 2004 to 2023 is conducted. Spearman's rank correlation is used to determine the strength and direction of linear relationship between the variables. Next, coming to my results and discussion part, uh, my first part is uh, publication trend. The scientific literature on intellectual property rights is sustainable digital libraries has, been, has seen fluctuations over the last 20 years. The cumulative number of research papers climbed from 54 in 2024, as you can see here, uh, to uh, 1646 in 2023. It is cumulative in number demonstrating a growing trend in the volume of scientific literature on intellectual property rights. The study uses a quadratic trend line that is degree to polynomial to analyze the relationship between the number of publications and the year in the data set, revealing the moderate trend. The trend line in figure one, as you all can see it over here, shows a, a positive trend until 2013. Uh, when it started to decline, the study found a moderate relationship between the number of publications and the year in the data set. In 2013, global discussions on intellectual property rights increased with the World Intellectual Property Organization, that is WIPO, promoting agreements. The rapid growth of, uh, of the internet and digital economies has raised new challenges including copyright infringement, trademark protection, data privacy, highlighting the importance of IPR. Despite the specific year, the factors highlighting the importance of IPR remain relevant today and are continuously evolving with the technological and economic landscape. Next, coming to my second part, that is keyword analysis. In this part, a keyword analysis was conducted to identify the research trend on intellectual property rights in sustainable digital libraries. At least 12 time encountered keywords were kept and figure 2 shows, as we all can see, the data analysis 
using Biosphere resulted in three clusters with 35 items and 181 links. High frequency keywords included digital libraries, digital preservation, copyright, metadata, information retrieval, digital archives, evaluation, etc. The analysis aimed to classify keywords based on their frequency and relevance. Next, coming to my keyword clustering part. With the help of this uh, keyword coherence, three clusters have been formed. And these are, I have already mentioned it, cluster 1 denotes education and digital libraries, which is denoted by red in color. It focuses on IPR from the perspective of education and digital libraries. Key terms include Evaluation, semantic web, design, experimentation, education, machine learning, and information extraction. Cluster 2 denotes intellectual property and digital preservation, which is denoted by green in color. It emphasizes the importance of digital preservation and intellectual property in various fields such as food, agriculture, environment, health, human rights, and trade. The most frequently used keywords in relationship to uh, this cluster are digital preservation, copyright, digital archives, digitization, open access, libraries and intellectual property. And my third and the last cluster focuses on the impact of the information retrieval and digital rights management which is denoted by the color blue. This, uh, in this cluster, the key terms include digital library, metadata, information retrieval, copyright protection, digital rights management, and digital humanities. Now coming to my uh, fourth slide, that is um, characteristics of highly cited paper on IPR in SDL. This table 1 uh, represents an analysis of top most 5 most cited publications in I on IPR in SDL depending on their features. This section mostly discusses the purpose, methods and key findings. Firstly, in Bob Brock Bob, the dollar one recognizer which is easily utilized by inexperienced programmers is tested against two popular methods, the Rebind Classifier and Dynamic Time Wrapping. Yes. Um, then, uh, Mike Kelwell conducted an evaluation on the development of bibliometrics since 1958. Thirdly, the authors, that is uh, Helby and others, examined the difficulties in putting a data space supporting platform that is GSSP into practice, practice and recommend uh, an exemplar driving bottom up methodology. Uh, next, the fourth, the goal of Mandling and others uh, is to introduce methods for autonomously synthesizing junglers. Next, last key, Hunt and others in 2005 study used K-wave spectral clustering to address the problem of differentiating, differentiating between authors with the same name label and shared name. Next, uh, in Spearsman rank correlation, um, here um, figure this uh, figure three shows the matrix representing the correction between the two variables with values ranging from minus one to one. And this Spearman rank correlation is done with the help of the R software. And uh, for, here are four types of, uh, four different types of relationships are displaced. Uh, firstly, positive correlation, then big positive correlation, negative correlation, and zero correlation. The uh, figure already explained this, which uh, are positive, which are big positive, negative, and zero correlation. These correlations offer insights into the relationship between the variables, but they do not necessarily indicate causation. Further analysis may be necessary to understand the underlying factor influencing these relationships. Next part, my, and the last part, my, that is conclusion part. In this part, this research aims to evaluate the trends in intellectual property rights, 
scholarly publications in uh, sustainable digital libraries between 2004 and 2003, 2023 using bibliometric indicators. The study found a uh, downward trend in IPR with a moderate relationship between the number of publications and the year. Keyword analysis was conducted for the meticulous association of keywords using three clusters, is a cluster one, education and uh, digital libraries, cluster two, intellectual property and digital libraries, and cluster three, information retrieval and digital rights management. The top five IPR articles with the most citations in sustainable digital libraries were examined. This part largely covered the objectives, procedures, and major findings of the study. Every cell in the matrix of uh, Spearsman rank correlation indicates the correlation between the pairs of variables, values which vary from minus 1 to 1, represent the relationship strength and duration, such as positive, with positive, negative, and zero correlation. The study provided valuable insights into IPR in SDL, but had some limitations, such as using only one bibliometric database, bibliographic database, that is the Scopus database I have used and only examining the publication trend, keyword vocalis uh, of cluster analysis, analysis of highly cited papers, years and time correlations, and others. For the studies, should consider suggested models, uh, deeper thematic analysis, and additional metrics to better understand the relationship between the IP and the So, the references and Thank you, Gaidi. Uh, in today's world, you know, we all talk about sustainability and sustainability is the key mantra of the day because we talk about sustainable growth, sustainable development. So when you talked about the sustainable digital libraries, that is really, really prominent. And it has been a very extensive research, I'm sure that because of which you were, you know, literally running to, to cover up all the points. So all the best for the next part of your research. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, so we would move on to the next presentation, which is again a joint paper uh, by Panchatapa Lepcha. I'm not sure whether I have pronounced the name correctly. Uh, it's a scholar department of uh, Library Information Science, University of Bhur Bongo, and Dr. Probi uh, Karki, as assistant professor, DLIS, uh, University of Bhur Bongo. So our topic is a study on tribal people's awareness and perception towards IPR in the Dwarfs region of West Bengal. And I would request the next two presenters to please adhere to the channel. A very good afternoon to everyone. Myself, Panchatapa Lecha, a research scholar from <coughs> University of Gorbongo. And my co-author and guide is Dr. Prabhik Karthi, Assistant Professor, uh, University of Gorbongo, Mandar. Our topic is a study on tribal people's awareness and perception towards intellectual property rights in the doers region of West Bengal. Our study focuses on the awareness and perception of lecture people of doers towards copyright only among different types of IPR. Brief introduction about lecture. The origin of lecture is obscure, but the lecture people believe to be the aboriginal inhabitants of Sikkim. They have migrated from, uh, from the slopes of Mount Kanchanjunga to Sikkim, Darjeeling, and nearby areas, one of such is Doer's region of West Bengal. Doer's, also known as Doer, which means multiple gateways that connect India with Bhutan and other North states. The tribal community of Rajbamshi, Toto, Tamang, Lecture, and the Bengali and Nepali community provide a rich essence to the cultural diversity of doers. If you go on reading, you see in many presentations, we see you copy paste. Your MS model, you copy paste into PowerPoint and read it one by one. How much time it will take? That is not PPT. Uh, yes. As quick as possible. So, uh, let's come to the objectives of the study. Few questions are selected as objectives of this study. 
Number one, are the lecturers people aware of IPL? What is their level, level of awareness regarding different types of IPL? The, uh, number three, where from they know about copyright? Number four, how did they infringe copyright? And what were the factors behind this infringement? Number five, what are their perceptions regarding the steps to be taken to reduce such infringement? For this study, survey method was adopted, questionnaires followed by interview and discussion techniques were used to collect the data from the uh, respondents. 80 questionnaires were distributed among the target age of people who are above 15 years age and out of which 67 questionnaires were collected to response rate of 83.75%. From the survey of we discovered the following according to given research questions. The first questions were uh, was are the lecture people aware of IPL? For this answer, we discovered that the 74% of lecture respondents aware about the IPL. And the second question was, what is the, uh, their level of awareness regarding different types of IPL? For this, uh, we found that a significant majority of participants have a high level of um, awareness of copyright followed by patent, trademarks, and other types of IPL. And the third question was, where from the knows about copyright? And the answer is that majority of lecture people indicate self-study as source of understanding the copyright. The fourth one was, how did they infringe copyright uh, and what were the factors behind this infringement? Answer the question, it is observed from their response that larger portion of lecture people infringe copyright from the internet collection without references followed by photocopy without author's permission, violations by PPT sites and copying others' writing without citation. And the last one, what are their perceptions regarding the steps to be taken to reduce such infringement? And the answer is the majority of lecture people are in the opinion of making more awareness of IPL, copyright law, referencing and citation, in, uh, introducing IPL in the curriculum of different levels of education and involvement of library and other management authorities to, in making the people aware on copyright and other IPLs. The finding uh, might be utilized by authorities to be uh, to take appropriate measures to raise awareness of copyright among other tribal people in the region. The study's uh, representative sample is limited to lecture people, but further study may also may be undertaken involving other indigenous people addressing other types of IPR. Together, and we as Indians, we are all you know in, in a diversified form, we are there, here, and there. So, it's very interesting that you took up this particular segment talking about the Doers region and let us open up the group board. Thank you. Uh, do we have the next questions? No, no, okay. All right, so we come to the uh, closing of this session. All right, so, um. Uh, I have one suggestion to you this year. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, she's there over there. Vajitopa, can you hear me? Yeah, you have to mention objectives of the study, but you have written research questions over there. And let me tell you one thing. When we do PhD thesis or when we do PhD kind of work or study or investigation, we have only one research question in our mind, and we want to add the seek answer from that. How many research questions do you have that you are going to seek answer upon? So you have to be more specific about your research questions. See, research questions are not the questions that you are using for your survey or data collection with okay? So in your objectives, you have to specify the objectives of your study. Then uh, based on that objective or those objectives, you have to Prepare one or might be two research questions actually that will be based. So uh, in the next, uh, I, I would very much uh, expect thing that you will do something you know, in this way. Thank you.
So should we come to the end of this uh, technical session? Okay. So uh, so we are officially closing this session. And before I close, uh, I would like to thank my co-chair and respected so over there, all the paper presenters. Thank you, Professor Udayan Bhattacharya, for giving me this opportunity. It has been an absolute privilege to chair this session. Thank you, TIC of my college, Dr. Shoyba Kondra, who has been there since morning. Till, you know, it's, it's the tag end of the day. Uh, so thank you. I, I must thank Dr. Ogi Roy, librarian of Tourism Memorial College. Uh, my, the staff of Tourism Memorial College is here since I belong to my college. So I'll have to take this opportunity to take all the names who have been integral parts of this uh, of this uh, seminar. And it has it has been a brilliant kind of exposition uh, to the to the themes that you have that you have brought in. So thank you, thank you all. It has been a wonderful session. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to express my heartfelt thanks to our, to our chairpersons for administering the session in a cordial and conditional manner. I would also like to express my gratitude to Professor Mohapatro for his comprehensive and informative lecture. Now, I would like to request our chairpersons to give field rights to our participants, to our presenters. Okay, uh, all of these are lost to any this summer. Next is Vishuddhi Bhattacharya.